The following is a Shaw TV sports presentation. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to beautiful, sunny Swift Current on this fine fall afternoon. And we are in for a bantam football battle on Shaw TV. Today, it is the Swift Current Lens Plumbing and Heating Smitty Steelers taking on the Moose Jaw Razorbacks. I'm Kennedy. This is my broadcast partner for the afternoon, Eldon Moberg. Eldon, president of Swift Current Minor Football, going to be the color guy this afternoon. Eldon, you know these teams pretty good. What can we expect today? Well, I think we, we're going to see a very good game. These are two of the top three teams in the league. Uh, the Razorbacks haven't lost this year, and they're, if you look at their point differential, they've been uh, dominating teams pretty good so far this year. They've had one tight battle, and that was against Weyburn. Uh, I think it was a 14-9 game earlier on this year. Swift Current just got done playing in Weyburn this past weekend and lost 34-28 in what was an excellent football game. So, you know, I think these are these are the three elite teams in the league, and I think this should be a good and beautiful day for it. Uh, no excuses in terms of weather at this stage of the game so uh, I think this should be a good a good battle between two top teams really at this stage of the game trying to earn and make sure that they get home field advantage in the playoffs already it is going to be a great football game Swift Current Moose Jaw kickoff coming up shortly enjoy it Eldon you know the thing about it is it's hard to believe some of these kids are Bantam really there's some big boys out there there is uh, and I think we'll see that from both teams you get the the lineman offensive defensive lineman on both teams uh, they can they can plow some holes so I think it'll be good to see. Looking forward to it. Enjoy the broadcast right here on Shaw TV. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to beautiful, sunny Swift Current on this fine fall afternoon. Kennedy, along with Eldon Moberg, Shaw TV, very thrilled to bring you some Bantam football. It is the Swift Current Lens Plumbing and Heating Smitty Steelers taking on the Moose Jaw Razorbacks. And Eldon, uh, I think we're in for a barn burner this afternoon, eh? It should be good. You know, I'm excited about it. Uh, excited that uh, Shaw TV is actually broadcasting uh, one of our games from a Swift Current Minor football perspective. That's, uh, you know, it's excellent when you get that uh, that kind of coverage. And, and two of the top teams in the league, I think an opportunity for them to, to show their skills um, to a little bit bigger crowd than even what they actually normally get uh, from a standpoint of their parents and family and friends that are there. So. Uh, you know, and a great day for it. You know, they're calling for rain and about mid-teens tomorrow in Swift Current. But today, you know, 20 degrees, sunshine, uh, beautiful day for it. So this should be good. I'm excited about it. Great day for Swift Current football. Absolutely it is. And I know uh, yourself, you've been involved with uh, minor football for a long time in the city here. Your son's going to be playing this afternoon. Uh, Swift Current 2-1, and one, Moose Jaw 3-0. and oh. So the Steelers will have their work come out for them. This Razorbacks team is a good football team. They are. I mean, they're a little bit of an older team. Uh, the Moose Jaw Minor League this year added, uh, you know, the opportunity to add a few more great 10 age players. And when you look at their roster, they've got about 10 of them on their roster. Um, Swift Current has one. So, you know, from an age perspective, uh, that obviously makes a little bit of a difference at this time in their development. Um, but having said that, I think uh, last week the, the Steelers were in Weyburn, 34-28 against a, a bigger team down there as well that had played a real tough game against the Razorbacks earlier on this year too. So I think um, you know, maybe contrasting styles a little bit, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, my expectation is the Moose Jaw team will be big and we'll try to pound it down uh, Swift Current's throat a little bit. And uh, I think for Swift Current, a little bit of a smaller team, but they've got some skill. Obviously, you know the Steelers a little bit better. More of a running team than a passing team. Is that the way they're orientated more than that, or a little bit of both? They've actually been real consistent in terms of, and very balanced this year so far. Um, you know, they've thrown the ball lots. Uh, Rhett Vavra is a receiver, very good receiver, great skills. And uh, Shane Freeze and a running back for them uh, that, uh, you know, when he gets into open space can make some things happen as well. So they've really used the big play. Um, so that'll be the kind of the key, I think. Can they generate enough big plays to, you know, stay in it against a very good Moose Jaw team? It's going to be a good one. We're set to go. Moose Jaw will kick off. Kick off. The uh, Swift Current Steelers will receive the ball to start this game. It'll be number 20 for Moose Jaw. That is Lane Johnson doing the kicking duties. Refs are set. We're getting into place here. And we'll be ready to roll. Beautiful Saturday afternoon. Bantam football. It's whistled in. And we are set to go. Johnson. The kick. Going to bounce down to the Swift Current player. 
and he takes it up to about the pretty good field position there, Eldon, to start up to about his own 50-yard line. Looks like, uh, was that number seven for Swift Current on the return? Looks like uh, Rat Vavra. Was that Vavra on the return? Yes. It was, yeah. And, uh, you know, last week in Weyburn, he had two touchdowns. I think every game this year he's had at least two. Um, so he's a good guy to have on your kickoff returns. He can make some things happen, happen has lots of speed. So it'll be first and 10 for the Swift Current Steelers. Ball set up at their own uh, looks like 47 yard line. First and 10, Swift from the 47. The quarterback is uh, Carter Moberg. I think you know that guy. I've met him once or twice. <laughs> Out of the shotgun. Moberg hands off. Is that Vavroff right tackle? I think it was Shane Friesen. Shane Friesen off right tackle, but he is uh, gang tackled there nicely by Moose Jaw. It'll be very, actually, it looks like it's going to be a loss of maybe about a half a yard on the play. What a yard on the play. It's going to be second and 11 now, Swift Current. Uh, that Moose Jaw defense swarming on that one. Well, I think it's going to be important that they try to establish some sort of a run game against them on the inside. I expect that it's probably going to be somewhat difficult. Uh, you look at the size of their defensive line, it's a, it's a good size crew. That's a good size crew. Out of the shotgun. It's Vavra around the left side on the sweep, but he doesn't have much run to room once again, room to run. Once again, that Moose Jaw team swarming. Penalty flags fly. We might have an unnecessary roughness call there. A little over aggressive on the tackle, but uh, we'll see what the call is here. But uh, a loss on the play, and that uh, that Moose Jaw defense looks like a formidable force so far, Eldon. Yeah, they they did a good job of containing. Uh, you know, they tried to get Vavra to the outside, and uh, they really did a good job of keeping him in, forcing him back into the inside. Uh, unfortunately, they maybe were a little overzealous at the end of the play, and it looks like the they've been flagged. So. I uh, would guess unnecessary yeah. roughness is what it looks like. So first down Steelers, they'll get another crack at this. And that is a 15-yard penalty, and that'll march the ball over to uh, Moose Jaw's side of the field. It'll be first and 10 after the penalty. Steelers from about Moose Jaw's 52-yard line. One of those things as a coach you just don't like. Yeah. You've made the stop, and uh, you see it in football all the time. You've made the stop, and all of a sudden you do something, and it uh, extends the play and gives them another chance to try and get something going. You know, the thing about penalties, too, is they can be drive killers, and they can be drive sustainers, can't they? Yeah, absolutely. Swift Colonel scrimmage uh, first and 10 from the Moose Jaw 52. Early in this football game, no score. Moberg out of the shotgun. Got a man open, screens it out to the uh, right side. He's down. It's going to be a nice gain there, about seven yards on uh, first down. Uh, didn't get the number there, Eldon. That player was? Carter Jurdot. Carter Jurdot, the youngster out of Gull Lake. I seen his dad, Wayne, here earlier. Uh, Carter Jurdot with a nice gain there. Positive yardage, a nice pass play there. It'll be a uh, gain of seven, second and three. Carter's a first-year guy for this Steelers team. Um, has actually caught quite a few balls early on this season and does a pretty good job, I think, uh, They've got some confidence in him to make some things happen. So good first round game. Second and three. Ball now down to the uh, Moose Jaw 45 yard line. Moberg out of the shotgun, hands off. Good run there, out the bust it to the outside and a nice run there. Shane Friesen again. Shane Friesen again with a nice run there, off, busting it off tackle, and that's a first down and a big gainer there. He's going to have about eight or ten, and that'll march it down around the Moose Jaw 30-yard line. That's a play that they've, you know, just sort of the, the off-tackle type play, trying to get him to and spring him to the outside. They've played, uh, used that quite a bit um, early on this year with some success, and when he gets to the outside, he didn't quite get to the corner on mm -hmm. that one, but when he does, um, he's very explosive. Moberg out of the shotgun, man open on the right side and he's got room to go, that's Favre down the sideline and he cuts score. Tiptoes, touchdown, the Steelers. Beautiful pass and run play there, Carter Moberg to Red Favre, a 33 yard touchdown run, pass and run. Beautiful and a good way to start the game for this Steelers, nice play there, Eldon. Well, and it's exactly kind of what we talked about before. You don't want to give another an offense another life, right? You don't want to give them another chance. And that penalty when they had them stuffed gave them another opportunity. But that's exactly what they've done all year. They've been able to get guys to the outside. And when Vavra gets some open space, he's very tough to catch. He looks like he's got some burners down the sidelines there. He's got some wheels. And you said he's a big cog here. Point after try now for the Steelers. And did he get it through? Nope. Eight. Point after try falls, uh, that was uh, number 30 on the point, Aiden Lamar with the attempt. Doesn't get through, but it's a 6 nothing lead for the Swift Current Steelers. Point after, uh, no good. And you, like, as you were saying, 
Vavra definitely a go-to guy for this uh, for this Steelers football club. He is. I mean, he's uh, he was part of the the South Sass Selects, uh, Selects program that's out of Moose Jaw, based out of Moose Jaw last uh, fall. Um, I guess winter really, mm -hmm. and they made a trip down to Florida. Um, and he was part of that program that they put on, and, and just he's just got tremendous speed. He's got very good hands, and when he, and very elusive in the open field. When he gets an opportunity with space, uh, just very difficult to contain. And you're always, you know, I think as a quarterback, you're always trying to put the the ball in the hands of your playmakers. So good opportunity for the Steelers to jump on uh, on top early. A great opening drive for the Swift Current Steelers, aided by that uh, unnecessary roughness penalty, but some nice passes. And it almost looks like Swift Current maybe has found something in their scouting. Uh, those passes out to the flat seem to be working early. Well, and, and we talked about that before. I think it's going to be difficult to, you know, to try to run in the middle against mm. these guys. And so, as you, know, you can I, see there, you yeah. can't you can't give up on it all together. But having said that, I think you you know you have to find ways to be able to get the ball outside. Aiden Lamar will kick off now for Swift Current. Tees up the ball at his own 35-yard line. It's a short kick. Comes down to the Moose Jaw player. Steps up. He's going to have room to go. Down the sidelines, he's got great room to go, and he could go as he got the wheels to go. It's number 20, foot race, and he's going to take it back. What a response by the Moose Jaw Razorbacks. That's number 20, Lane Johnson, the kicker, with a return there. That'll go down as about a 60-yard kickoff return. The near side sidelines opened up for us. Uh, and I guess if you want a response on the road, that's the way to do it for Moose Jaw right there. Wow. Turned on the Jets down the sidelines and he wasn't going to be caught. Well, cardinal sin for your outside gunner on a kickoff return is just don't make sure or make sure that you turn the guy back inside and he got turned to the inside and uh, all that left a lane. And uh, when you look at, uh, at Johnson, he can run as well. And when he got open space, he was gone. And now Lane Johnson will try to convert his own touchdown return. About a 60-yard kickoff return just like that. And it's good. And Moose Jaw will take a 7-6 lead. And Eldon, have we got the makings of a shootout here early today? Well, I guess we'll see, eh? Well, this is exactly what the game was in Weyburn last week between Swift Kern and Weyburn. It was a 34-28 game, although when I say that, the first half was actually pretty tight. It was 7-7 at the half. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, uh, an explosion in the second half. But, um, you know, obviously just seeing this, this is my first chance to see the Moose Jaw team. But you don't put up 86 points against nine against without having some guys who can who can make plays yeah. and so um, you know obviously that's a little bit what we saw I'm sure they've got some guys that uh, can do that as well the only unfortunate thing is if you're a member of their offense you don't even see the field actually for the first part of the game that uh, just your defense and special teams so far but I'm sure they'll take it yeah, Moose Jaw, it's going to be, uh, we're going to be midway through the uh, first quarter here at least before the Moose Jaw offense will take the field it is a 60 yard kickoff return for Lane Johnson Answers the Red Vavra 33 yard touchdown pass from Carter Moberg. And the difference right now, that convert, 7 6 with uh, just under eight minutes to go first quarter, just nicely getting rolling here at the Comp High School on a beautiful Saturday afternoon for Bantam football on Shaw TV. And Lane Johnson will tee it up now at his own 35 yard line. And uh, the Swift Current offense will get their second shot at the game here, second time on the field this game. Interesting, the actual, the first touchdown came at about 356, the, the second one at 407, so. <laughs> 11 seconds apart. Yeah. Swift Kurt now, picks up the ball at his own 35-yard line, up over the 40 to 47. Didn't get the number there, Eldon, the returner was. Shane Friesen on the return. Shane Friesen, one of the offensive cogs <laughs> for uh, Swift Kurt. He does get the ball up Shane to his 41-yard line. It'll be about a six-yard return for the uh, Bantam Steelers, and First and 10, Swift Current set up at their own 41-yard line midway through, or not quite midway through this uh, first quarter. 7-6 for Moose Jaw early in this football game. And we'll see if the uh, Steelers continue to utilize the pass. It looks like uh, Moose Jaw has got a pretty potent run-stopping defense. Yeah, I think they do. I mean, but you still have to test it. So that'll mm. be the thing is, can they get something done? Moberg wants to put it in the air again. Over the middle. Nice catch there. 
Beautiful pass right over the middle. That's going to be a gain of what, 11 or 12. I believe that was Vavra again, wasn't it? Right over the middle. And uh, he looks like a go-to guy early here. That'll be a gain of uh, about 12. So it's going to be a first down. That was a nice pass and run right over the middle there from uh, Moberg to Vavra. Yeah, I would say he would be the uh, Steelers name and Roosevelt if you were looking as a <laughs> yeah. comparison. If you're going to try to get a, in a, into your playmaker's he's hands, the, he'd he's be the, the guy. guy. So it will be first and 10. Swift up at the 53-yard line, their own 53. Hand off left side. It's not going to go anywhere, though. Once again, that run defense for Moose Jaw snuffs it out. Player tries to break it off the right tackle there. That was freezing again, trying to bust off right tackle, but a big loss there as the Moose Jaw defense snuffs it out. It's going to be an eight-yard loss and second and 18 now, very long. No doubt, probably a passing play here for Swift Current. Yeah, and I think that's going to be a key. I mean, the offensive line obviously is going to be tested in this game, but they're going to have to, if for to have success, they're going to have to open up some holes and some space for him mm. so that there's not that penetration in the backfield to give him a chance. We're working out of the shotgun, Moberg. He's got Favre going long. Oh, in and out of the arms. He'd love to have that one back. That was going to be close to first down yardage if he caught it. Ball on the numbers, but... Uh, it's going to happen. Even the pros uh, have the odd drop every now and then. Tough break there for uh, young uh, Vavra, and it'll be a punting situation for Swift Garner. But that one was right on the money, just in and out of the arms. Well, one of those situations where the defender was able to get a hand yeah, up. Yeah, a little and, distraction, and I maybe. think got it in his face a little bit where he was, wasn't sure that it was going to get through. And, you know, the defensive back did a good job. I think that was uh, number 11, Brody Bennett, who was right there for, for the Razorbacks. So did a good job of just being in the right place. Didn't quite reach it, but... Um, enough to distract them. Punting situation. It'll be Lamar with a nice punt. Chases the Moose Jaw player. That is number 22, Drake Douglas. Back into his own territory. And he's got room down the sidelines again. And can Douglas go? Looks like he's going to get caught from behind. But a beautiful return there, Douglas. And he's got Moose Jaw in great field position. The wheels down the sideline. And specialty teams right now, he is going to be set up. He gets Moose Jaw down to about the 32-yard line. Right now, the specialty teams for uh, Moose Jaw getting it done early in this game, Eldon. And that's actually been a little bit of their MO, I think, in the Weyburn game, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. I think they had a couple of special teams touchdowns mm. in that game in what was a, you know, a tight 14-9 uh, tight game. And I think their touchdowns came via special teams. So... They're showing signs that obviously they're very well coached in that area and, and, and can make some things happen. So it'll be uh, Will Ansel, the quarterback. He's going to work out of the shotgun. First and 10, Moose Jaw at the Swift Current 32 yard line after that big punt returned by Douglas. Takes a snap, hands off to the man off left tackle. He's got room to go. Bust it to the outside. That is number 21 for Moose Jaw. Bryden Bell with a big gain there. He's down inside around the 10 yard line for Swift Current. Well, maybe closer to about the 15. He's pushed out of bounds, but uh, Moose Jaw knocking on the door again here. Nice play there. That was Bell with a big run. Well, and great blocking up front. And the, he had, by the time he actually saw anyone, I think he was probably about seven yards um, into the Steelers' backfield. So, uh, again, you're going to have to get a little bit of penetration if you're Swift Current. But for Moose Jaw, great, uh, great job in, in opening holes up front. Big run for Bell. It's going to be a big gain down inside the uh, Swift Current 15-yard line. They're knocking on the door. Will Ansel out of the shotgun, the quarterback for Moose Jaw. Hands off again to Bell inside. This time a little bit better job, shorter gain. He'll have about four or five right up the middle. Better reaction there from the Swift Current defense. And maybe they can hold here and force a field goal attempt. Uh, but it'll be second and about. He is going to have about five. It's going to be second and about five or six for Moose Jaw. Ball right pretty much at the Swift Current 10-yard line. Good play, though, by Bell. I mean, he was actually, there was a, a defender who, mm. who really shot the gap and got into the backfield, and he made him miss to a degree and then was able to drag him forward for about five yards. So good, strong run. It'll be second and five. They can get a first down without scoring, Moose Jaw. Down at the Swift Current 10-yard line. Ansel out of the shotgun. We'll see if he elects to put it in the air here. They keep it on the ground. He's got Bell in the backfield. Going to be the handoff to Douglas, the punt returner around the left right side, and he's going to score. Douglas, that was a nice play, sort of a reverse around the right end. Douglas, the speedster, with the punt return. He's got the touchdown, and it'll be a 13-7 Moose Jaw lead with under three to go in the first quarter and the uh, point after to come here. But uh, Douglas, obviously a go-to guy for Moose Jaw, too. He's got some burners, and uh, 
he got to the outside there and pretty much just walked into the end zone. Well, and well executed again. Their mm -hmm. wide receiver did a real good job of sealing um, the, the Steelers' cornerback to the inside, which enabled them to get to the outside on that. So, you know, exactly as you would draw it up as an offensive coordinator, you want to get your guy to the outside, and, and uh, they executed. Lane Johnson uh, with the point after again. And with 2.40 to go in the first quarter, the Moose Jaw Razorbacks take a 14 to 6 lead over the Swift Current, Lens Plumbing and Heating, Smitty Steelers here on this great Bantam football game on this beautiful Saturday afternoon, afternoon in sunny Swift Current on Shaw TV. Uh, you know what? It's, I've said it before, be, before the broadcast, uh, there's some big boys out there for Bantam football and, uh, you know, uh, on both sides of the ball. When that uh, Moose Jaw offensive line <laughs> lines up, it's hard to believe they're just 13, 14, 15 years old. Yeah, Ken, I actually remember a big <laughs> Shonovan uh, <laughs> offensive line many, many moons ago. That uh, We had a rather large line back then, You did. Too. I think it was about as big as, uh, <laughs> as a lot of uh, junior and, and maybe professional teams at that time in high school, but they are, they are a good sized crew for sure. And, that, and that's going to be tough. I mean, as a defensive lineman for the Steelers, they're going to have to find ways to be able to get through, battle through. Um, and linebackers are going to have to find ways to be able to come up and make some tackles. But, you know, not only was the, was the blocking, the play uh, blocking there, but the play was well executed mm -hmm. as well. So they're doing a good job uh, in the limited amount of time they've been on offense. You know, both teams so far, uh, I've been impressed offensively, have made some nice plays. It'll be Vavra. On the kickoff return for Swift Current. Gets up over the 30, near the 35, but he'll be dropped there and it'll be first and 10. Swift Current after the kickoff by Moose Jaws Lane Johnson. And it'll be the third offensive series for the Swift Current Steelers. They come on the field. They opened with a nice touchdown. 33 yard pass and run from Carter Moberg to uh, Mr. Vavra, Rhett Vavra. But it's been back-to-back uh, -back touchdowns. A kickoff return by Lane Johnson. And then a uh, nice 10 yard touchdown run from number 21 for Moose Jaw, Bryden Bell. Or pardon me, it was uh, Drake Douglas, I believe, with that. And 14-6 uh, is where we sit right now. First and 10, Carter Mober got to the shotgun. He wants to go to the air. Has a man open, it's freezing, but in and out of his hands. Drop there, Friesen would probably like to have that one back. Yeah, I mean, they got him to the outside, put him in some space, and the and, uh, you know, ball was there. And it just, uh, one of those situations again where you know, you're trying to make that catch. He wanted to make the play, just didn't, uh, wasn't able to squeeze it. It definitely looks like Swift Current is going to try to use that passing game more and more, and especially those uh, sort of flare passes out into the flats. Uh, maybe they've seen something there from the Moose Jaw defense. Moberg, second and ten. Same thing to Vavra outside. Puts it in his, puts it in his hands, and Vavra's got the wheels down the sidelines. Could he go? Oh, just a nice tackle there. He almost went, but a huge gain. Once again, Red Vavra. If it wasn't for number nine, Caden smith Schofer, it was six points for the Steelers. It almost looked like he was going to pull away, but smith Schofer makes a uh, touchdown-saving tackle, no doubt. Well, that's what you're looking for out of your free safety, and he came across. I think free safety is where he's playing, and, and he came across and, and took a good angle, cut him off. You're right. It did look like for a second he might have kind of uh, cut underneath it a little bit too much, but great tackle, nice play, but still a big gainer for Swift Current. They needed that. They got a first down, and, and they're still in business. Big gainer. It's about 30 yards for Vavra. Moberg under the shotgun again. Other side. Now this is Jurdock. He breaks a tackle. And he's going to have a decent gain there. It's going to be about five yards for Carter Jurdot, his for, uh, first year player, and that's his second reception of the game. And it will be about, uh, about five. So they're using those quick outers effectively, and Jurdot uh, has caught a couple of them. Well, and what you're hoping, I think, if you're the offense, is that if you spread it out a little bit that way, you open things up in the middle where maybe you can get your running attack up the middle um, going. I mean, obviously, early they weren't able to have much success that way, but you've got to keep trying it. Moberg out of the shotgun, second and six. Once again, outside this time, just misses his man. Looking for the uh, Aiden Erie out there in that right side flat. Same uh, type of uh, play they used uh, for success with the big gainer to Vavra, but just led him a little bit too far. And it'll be third and about six for Swift Current. Yeah, good try. And actually, he was open. I mean, he if was, he could have yeah. caught it, I think he would have had a pretty good chance to, uh, you know, to get a first down. Just a little bit underthrown, a little bit out of his reach. A good job, though, the, to move the ball, and, 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 and uh, now they can punt. They're going to go for it here, actually, on third down. They're going to go for it. And it is going to be Favre again, and this time he's going to score third down. 
Oh, and no, another tackle is Smith Schofer coming over there. Vaver, every time he looks like he's gone, we've got the two speedsters going toe to toe out there. It's Vaver for uh, Swift Current and Smith Schofer. That's the second play where Smith Schofer has come over and saved a touchdown just when it looked like Vaver was going to tiptoe down the sidelines for six again. But what a play! Third and six for Swift Current and a big gamble there to end the first quarter, and uh, they're in the red zone in scoring position. A great response by this Swift Current offense after giving up back-to-back -back touchdowns for Moose Jaw. Yeah, they continue to move the ball, so now we'll see in the in the second quarter whether they're able to punch it in. I'm impressed with this passing game for Swift Current. Uh, Carter Moberg has uh, utilized many of his receivers. I mean, obviously, uh, Vavra is the go-to guy. He's hit uh, Jurdot with a couple, though, and looked for some other guys as well, but... Uh, they're really utilizing those slant patterns, those flare patterns out into the flat, as uh, the late Ron Lancaster loved to refer to it, the flat, but really utilizing those. That's been their bread and butter in the first quarter so far, Eldon. It is, and I, I think you have to distribute the ball. I mean, eventually, Moose Jaw is going, as a defensive coordinator, you're, gonna, you're going to make some adjustments, mm -hmm. and uh, those adjustments are you're going to try to take away those things on the outside as much as you can, so they've, you know, they have to move it around. It can't be just to one guy. So we're uh, switch ends, one quarter in the books. It's 14-6 Moose Jaw, and it will be first and 10. They can, it looks like that they can get a first down without uh, reaching the end zone. Are they first and 10 at about the 11 there, it looks like. Hey, Eldon, they're right around the 11. They might be able to get a first down without getting in the end zone. Nonetheless, they're knocking on the door in the red zone, the Steelers are. Yeah, for sure. I think that they definitely can. I think it is right at the 11-yard line. So that's that's a good thing as long as you can, you know, you can find the space to get down there. At the end, you're still trying to score when you're here, though. You want to punch it in as quick as you can. 14-6, Moose Jaw, Razorbacks leading the Swift Current, Lens Plumbing and Heating, Smitty Steelers. It's Bantam football on Shaw TV. Hope you're enjoying the, the game. And once again, a big shout-out to Shaw for... Uh, for broadcasting this game, it's uh, it's a great exposure for Bantam football in this uh, you know in this minor Bantam football league. It is, uh, and they're a, a big supporter, the the key sponsor, mm -hmm. official sponsor of Swift Current Minor Football. So uh, they you know they obviously football is what they like to do, and good to see them participating at a local level like this. It looks like uh, the Steelers can get a first down there at the 11 yard line. It's going to be first and ten. Carter. Mo Touchdown! Beautiful pass there. Touchdown. Uh, that is number 22, Tyrell Gardner for Swift Current with a touchdown pass. What a strike that was, uh, and what a catch. Highlight reel catch there by Tyrell Gardner. An 11 yard touchdown pass. And it's 14 12 now with the point after to come. That was a beautiful play and a nice drive put together by the Steelers there, and they needed that to answer. And a flag after, I think it's it's maybe a late hit on the quarterback. Mm. And if that's the case, it would be applied on the kickoff uh, is, is what I believe it was. But, yeah, I mean, that was it was a nice play. I mean, Tyrell got in, be, or Gardner got in behind their, their defensive back. He was he was wide open. He put himself in a position where he was open. And, and that's, I think, a little bit, if, and, I, and I'm not certain, but I think they kind of played the, the, the pass into the flat, and all of a sudden they went up over top to the deep guy, and he was wide open. So using the options on that, on that root tree. You know, Moberg had to put it just in the right spot. The point after uh, by uh, Lamar after his uh, no good, so it'll stay 14-12. First play of the second quarter, the Steelers strike, and they needed that to keep this game close with a, a team from Moose Jaw that's 3-0 on the season, and uh, you can see why. They've, uh, they've got some weapons, but Swift Current keeping it close, and they're right there, but Moberg really had to lay that in there nicely. He had to throw it over top of a couple guys and drop it in there, and, and Gardner made just a great adjustment to the ball, and caught it as he was going down and was able to hang on and get his arms under it before it hit the turf. Yeah, that's a nice catch. That's a big play and a good touchdown for Tyrell Gardner. Um, I think that's his first touchdown of the year, so he'll be excited uh, to get that in the books. And um, You know, just from, from a team perspective, it keeps them in it. And this is very reminiscent of what we saw between Swift Current and Weyburn last week. And, and, you know, when you can see Bantam football like this where, you know, they kind of continue to punch at each other and it's back and yeah. forth, not sure really within Moose Jaw Minor football at the Bantam level whether the organizers could be any more pleased with, uh, with that, that you have that competitiveness. It's great football. I've been very impressed with what I've seen so far this afternoon. 
So Lamar kicks off. That'll come down to the Moose Jaw player, number 22, Drake Douglas, the returner. He's got some wheels. He wants to try to break it to the outside, but a good special teams tackle downfield there. And great coverage by the Steelers getting down there to make that hit. And, uh, and uh, Moose Jaw will start back at about their only own 30-yard line. It's good special teams there. And they needed that after giving up some big special teams plays in the uh, in the first quarter, Eldon. That was a that was a great tackle, and I think it actually stung uh, Douglas a little bit. It he did. took the shot in the thigh, and you know, hopefully, he just went to the sideline, and he and he's laying there. Hopefully, he's okay. You can yeah. tell he's a very good football player, and you you don't want to see anybody banged up. But it was it was a nice open field tackle. He tried to get to the outside and kind of textbook, you know, kind of lower the shoulder into the knee, and you kind of worry about a Charlie horse or, or that type of injury on that. He's He's on the sidelines and, and you know, hope they're attending to him right now, but hopefully we see him back in the game. Drake Douglas, yeah, he's a big part of this Moose Jaw team. We certainly hope he's okay. Moose Jaw will be first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Will Ansel, the quarterback, he works out of the shotgun. 14-12, early second quarter. Moose Jaw leads it in a great football game here on a picture-perfect Saturday afternoon for football. Gives it on the inside uh, handoff to number 21, Bryden Bell. And he'll have a gain of about four or five. It's going to be second down and about six for Moose Jaw, up near their own 30-yard line. Uh, better coverage there, run coverage there by the uh, Steeler defense. Yeah, I think Bell would probably be kicking himself a little bit. He, he did a great job, made a great move to cut back into the inside, but the Steeler defender got just enough of him to trip him up, and he couldn't keep his footing to what probably could have turned it into a much bigger gain. It's actually a gain of about three. It'll be second and seven, Moose Jaw. Ball just uh, up near their own 30, about their own... 28 out of the shotgun is Ansel and he wants to go long. He's got a man out there. But good coverage by Swift Kern. He was looking for uh, number six, Devin Bowman was the intended receiver there, but good coverage by Swift Kern. And uh, a big stand here, a two and out for the Steeler D. Yeah, and that's what they needed. I, I think even just for some confidence that you can actually stop them after, you know, the first series that they Third had, they basically drove it at will. So, you know, they needed that, uh, that stop and, you know, gets it back into their offense's hands and, and allows them to get one more, um, one more chance. I mean, two of the three drives, they've been able to score as well. So good job by the Steelers' defense. So it'll be a punting situation now on third and long. Good punt there for Moose Jaw's number 11, Brody Bennett. It'll come down, I believe that's freezing the Swift Current player at his own 50-yard line. So the Steelers, it's a short return, good downfield coverage for Moose Jaw on their special teams, punt coverage there. A return of about two by Friesen. Tackle but pretty good field position for the Steelers to start Bowden, at uh, about their own 52-yard line. And Moberg and uh, the uh, offense will get a chance to go back to work here. I've been real impressed with Moose Jaw's special team so yeah. far. Um, you know, obviously very disciplined in their approach. I mean, their, their coverage has been very good. Obviously, they've got the, the return touchdown already as well. So, um, you know, they're doing a great job in that third, that third area of the game that's so important. Well-coached group by Moose Jaw head coach Brian Boys and his crew. Moberg, once again, there's that flat pass. Ball fumbled on the play, but I believe it's going to be whistled down. It will be a gain of about uh, three. Good coverage uh, on that far sideline by the Moose Jaw defense. It is a gain of about three. Complete pass, and it'll be second down and seven. Garrett Kurtz, one of the three running backs for uh, the Steelers, was the recipient on that one. So, And, you know, that's, that's again, you have Friesen, you have Vavre that are key guys, but you have to get it into the yeah. hands of other guys. And Kurtz has had a good year this year. He's you know, he's made some things happen. He's, uh, he, he, when he gets to the outside, he can do some damage. Moberg on the drop play. Oh, but it's fumbled there. Some miscommunication there. Moberg, they were a little bit of trickery there as he was the drop play, trying to trick up that Moose Jaw D, but they didn't bite. Fumbled ball, bad exchange, quarterback, running back, and Moose Jaw jumps on it. They pounce on it there, and they'll be set up now at the uh, Swift Current 44-yard uh, line, so a, a tough turnover there for the Steelers, but... Moose Jaw's defense coming up big with a turnover. It was, and, and, you know, they've had such good push up the middle so far. You know, that draw play, it's tough to be able to execute that you've if you've got, got good gotta push, right? So, yeah. um, and they were right there, and, yeah, botch snap, and all of a sudden you've got it back into the Razorbacks' hands and in great field position. I know even the Riders last night attempted to run a draw play against Ottawa on Friday, and it was, the timing was bad, so it's a tough play to execute. Moose Jaw first uh, down at the Swift Current 40 yard line here's Douglas around the right side he's got some room to go busted to the outside he's got the wheels cut go all the way breaks a tackle still on his feet and he's gonna score 
Great play there by the Moose Jaw Razorbacks, number 22, Drake Douglas. That'll be his second of the game, I believe, Eldon. Around the right side, rambles 44 yards for the touchdown, the handoff from Ansel. And Moose Jaw takes a 20 to 12 lead with a point after to come. And once again, Douglas showing the wheels down the sidelines there, got to the outside, and a nice job of breaking a tackle too to, uh, to keep the play alive and score. Well, I'd heard about uh, Drake Douglas coming in. I knew he was one of their key guys, and uh, he's definitely uh, lived up to the billing. When mm -hmm. he gets to the outside, he, he's tough to bring down as well, and, and real good feet. Is he the kid that took the, he's the kid that took the kickoff back too, eh? Yeah, he is. Point after is good. They've been uh, spot on in those conversions too, Moose Jaw has, and it's 21-12, 719 to go here in the second quarter. He actually isn't the guy who scored on the oh, no. kickoff. He actually scored their previous touchdown as well on offense. Oh, he's the guy that took it yeah. in. Uh, and basically the same type of play. Yeah, almost. it was. Yeah, yeah, came around the edge and yeah. got to the edge. And, you know, they found ways to get to the, to the corner. You know, again on that one, I thought, uh, you know, he got to the edge early. They cut him off, but just couldn't bring him down. And, and it's, it's actually very similar both ways. You know, I think each defensive coordinator is going to look at how do we prevent guys from getting to that outside because that's really where they've been torched early on. So the Moose Jaw Razorbacks capitalize on the fumble by Swift Current. And the first play, it's Douglas who rambles 44 yards on that end around play on the right side. Second touchdown of the game for Douglas. And we're uh, almost at the midway point of the second quarter. It's 21-12 and... You would think maybe the, the Steelers here as we uh, head towards halftime want to have a bit of an answer here on uh, offense and, and maybe at least try to move the ball and keep their defense off the field for a little while or even put some points on the board if they can. Yeah, I think I, that's always important, when, especially you don't want to, going into the, the later part of the first half, you don't want to get down too much. It makes a tough hill to climb. It'll be Vavra on the return, and the ball will actually bounce out of bounds there down at the uh, Swift Current 35-yard line. And the uh, Steelers will scrimmage there. Right at their own 35-yard line. It'll be first and 10. 21-12. This is Bantam football penalty flag uh, on the field. Is that because the ball went out of bounds? The kickoff went out of bounds, Eldon? I believe so. And that, I was just actually waiting for that to see if, it, if, it, uh, if he touched it. I didn't think he had touched it before it went out of bounds. So it would be an illegal kickoff. And uh, they'll get a little bit better field position from this. Yeah. Could be an illegal kickoff. Yeah, and it looks like it is because they're meeting with the Swift Current captains right now. 21 12. This is uh, Bantam football on Shaw TV on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in sunny Swift Current. Picture perfect fall day for a Bantam football game. As the refs meet, looks like they are going to call it an illegal kickoff because it did bounce out of bounds and maybe Vavra didn't touch it. We'll get the call here from. Head referee Mike Zaretsky. And that, that's definitely what it is. Um, it is a uh, It's an illegal yeah. legal kickoff. So, you know, they'll get the field position right at the 40, their own 40-yard line. Apparently. So, um, so it's, you know, good field position, good start. Actually, both teams have had good field position. Nobody's really been pinned down so much. That is what happens when you're dealing with kickoffs throughout the first half. So it will be first and 10 for the Steelers at their own 40-yard line after the five-yard penalty. But just over seven to go in the second quarter. 21-12. Moose Jaw leads it. Moberg under the shotgun. He has motion. Drops straight back to pass. Looks over the middle. And he's got his man there. Beautiful pass to Vavra. Right on the money. That was a pretty play. A tight spiral right over the middle into coverage. And Vavra with a big gain. It's about a 16-yard gainer up near midfield. And it'll be first and 10 for the Steelers. You know, they've done a good job with that play, and that was actually one they scored on in Weyburn last week where it went right uh, kind of up the middle. Safety wasn't able to get there on time, and, and Rhett was able to break through. On this one, you know, the Razorbacks did a good job of being able to contain them in the middle, but uh, still a nice gainer for them on first down. It's a gain of 18 up to the 53-yard line pass and run play from Moberg to Vavra. They have clicked a couple times nicely this afternoon for Swift Current. First and 10, Steelers. Here's a running play to Friesen. Bossett, was it Friesen or did I get the number right it's there? It's Garrett, Garrett Kurtz with Garrett the run. Kurtz. Nice run too, finally a bit of a success on the ground for the Steelers. They haven't had a lot of that and some positive yardage. It's a gain of about four or five for Swift Kern and puts him in a second and decent situation. Yeah, what I like on that one, not only was he able to kind of find a hole and get it, when, when he got to the, the end of the play, lowered the shoulder and, and probably moved it an extra yard downfield. Um, 
Moose had a good job of containing, but still a good first round run. Moberg out of the uh, shotgun, throws it out there. Man open and he's gonna have a first down. Nice catch and run play. That is Tyrell Gardner, who made a uh, outstanding catch for a touchdown early in the second quarter. And Gardner with a nice catch there to haul it down. He's got first down yardage and uh, the Steelers on the move here. They're now down to the uh, Moose Jaw 38 yard line, utilizing that, that uh, flare pass effectively. That was a tough catch. He's not a big guy and it was up a little bit and he had to go up to get it and, and did a real good job, real nice job of bringing it down. So it'll be first and 10 at the Moose Jaw 38. Swift current, Moberg shotgun. He's gonna sweep it to Friesland around the right side, but once again, that is read nicely by that Moose Jaw defense. Uh, a great Ball play there by Moose Jaws. I believe that was number 25. Josh Warner got out there to make a nice tackle in the open field, and it's actually a big uh, a loss of about four. It's going to be second and about 14 now for Swift Current. I've liked what their outside linebackers have been able to do. Yeah. Um, they really haven't allowed too much so far in, in being able to get to that edge on the with the run. They've turned everything back to the inside, and a, and a good play by Warner there for sure. Is he, you know, sure tackle too once he got there. He wrapped him up nice. Moberg will work out of the shotgun on second and about 14. He's got pressure, rolls to his left, tucks it in, and he's gonna run it. But he's gonna be stopped short, fumbles the football and is picked up by Moose Jaw and he's going the other way. Number nine for Moose Jaw with a big return and another turnover there by the uh, Swifter defense, a tough break there. That was a great play by Caden smith Schofer, who has been a defensive stalwart this afternoon for the uh, Razorbacks, and he has a huge fumble return there down inside the Swift Current 25 yard line. Another tough turnover there for that Swift Current offense. Well, in real good pursuit from the back end on that play as you know, Moberg got to the outside and it looked like he had some space to get there, but he was tracked down from behind. And uh, on the tackle, just a real good, real strong tackle and uh, arm came through and forced the turnover on it. And, and Smith Schofer uh, becomes the, the benefactor of that, the, the Ed Ganey of uh, the Razorbacks. <laughs> uh, he, and it looked like um, maybe Moberg was thinking pass, pass, pass still, and he didn't tuck the ball in, and he didn't see uh, anybody coming up behind him, and it was a good job to uh, strip him of the football and take it the other way. And Moose Jaw's in business down uh, around the Swift Current 25-yard line. It's a direct snap there to Douglas. Goes around the outside, right side, breaking tackles, and he's going to be close to first down yardage on a nice play. Direct snap there, Moose Jaw utilizes it, and it'll be uh, close to first down, if not a first down, for Moose Jaw, and they're knocking on the door again and looking to turn this turnover into points. Yeah, not a bad decision to get it into his hands and a little bit of the wildcat for them because he's lined up as a running back at times, but on this one uh, was as the quarterback and uh, just came right to him and there was no mystery as to what they were going to do. It was, uh, I'm going to take the ball and see how far I can go with it. Douglas, a, a key guy there. It's a gain of about, uh, for Moose Jaw, it's a gain of about nine. It's second and about one down around the Swift Current to 16 yard line. Ansel, the quarterback, is gonna work out of the shotgun. Hangs on and it's a, the give inside. It cuts it inside, but it'll be a first down. Handoff inside to number 23, Xander Montgomery, the ball carrier there for, uh, for Moose John. He gets a nice gain and it will be a first down. It'll be first in goal for uh, the, uh, the, the Razorbacks. There is a flag can, and I'm not exactly sure what that was. It came out late in the uh, Steelers' defensive backfield. Normally, you would think that that would be kind of a, uh, you know, a defensive pass interference type mm -hmm. penalty when it's back there, but not certain what the call is. It looks... Oh, legal, oh. legal block on the Razorbacks. Hands to the face. It looked like a legal block, the call from head referee Mike Zaretsky. So that will take it back, actually, 10 yards, and uh, they'll repeat first down. It'll be uh, first and about five. I think I think they called it, uh, it was after yards gain, oh, so it'll okay. be a first and 10 for them, but uh, okay. still took them back the 10 yards. So First and 10, and the ball will come back to about the 19-yard line of Swift Current. So, yeah, it was after yards were gained. That's right. Good call on that. Eldon. Yeah, so they still get the first down. They get the opportunity to, to go, and again, nice... You know, nice run, uh, run blocking up front for the Razorbacks. Uh, obviously downfield, somebody maybe did something they didn't, uh, weren't supposed to. But you know, up front, they did a real good job of, of creating some early holes, so they had, uh, you know, plenty of room to get that first down, or what would have been the first down in that situation. Nice run by Montgomery, and I think that might be his first carry of the game too, uh, Montgomery, and a, a good yardage from him on there. So it will be 
First and 10, the ball right around the uh, Swift Current 20 yard line. Ansel, the Moose Jaw quarterback, will work out of the shotgun. Gives off around the left side. It's kind of a, a, an end around to number six for Moose Jaw. Breaks the tackle, gets to the outside. He's going to have some good yardage here. That's Devin Bowman, the ball carrier. Swift Current player had a shot at him, but uh, good job there to break a tackle and, uh, and get some positive yards on first down for Bowman. Another flag came out late, so not sure if this was, uh, it looked right on the tackle, so I'm assuming it might have been uh, something on, on, although they're talking to the Swift Current captains again, so maybe it was something on the outside. You really see that they're trying to get to the ball to the outside, mm -hmm. and their receivers are really jamming up and blocking and, and, and sealing off to the, to the outside. So doing a real good job on their offensive formations of getting their ball carrier to the outside. On that one, you're right, became a one-on-one -on -one with the, the cornerback to try and make the play and couldn't quite bring him down. But it looks like they might be bringing this one back. We'll get the call from the head referee, Mike Soretsky, here. Unnecessary roughness. An unnecessary roughness call against Musha takes it back 15 yards, so... That was the ball carrier who got it. So something on the far side of the yeah. field obviously happened after he was tackled there. We couldn't see it from our vantage point, but uh, it does take the ball back 15 yards. And uh, so all the way back now, it's going to be uh, first down and about <laughs> 20 or 25 from the uh, back to the 33-yard line now of the uh, Steelers. So some... Uh, a lot of real estate here for Moose Jaw to cover with about two and a half to go in the first half. They lead it 21-12. It's Bantam football on Shaw TV. And what's been a very entertaining football game so far, Eldon? Yeah, and the Steelers really need to get a stop here. I mean, they're, they've put them in a first and 25. And, uh, you know, obviously they, they need to get two, two stops here to, to, to get the ball back in their offense's hands before the end of the first half. For Moose Jaw, on the other hand, what an opportunity um, to kind of put a little bit of a dagger in, in the Steelers' hearts at the end of the first half if they can punch one in. So, uh, you know, obviously two teams looking at things very differently at this stage of the game. But Moose Jaw's done a good job, and they've been able to eat up chunks of real estate at a time. So we'll see whether the Steelers have a stop in them. It is going to be first and about 25 at the Swift Current 33-yard line now after that uh, roughing penalty against Bowman. Douglas now lining up his quarterback. He's going to put it in the air. Looking long. Got a man out there, and what a catch. Nice catch there. That is number 16 for Moose Jaw with a great grab. Tyra, Tyron Ferguson Steele with a great catch there. Covered by Declan Poppy and uh, got over top of him. And Ferguson, that's a huge play, but another penalty flag down. Eldon, not sure what's that, what that one's going to be for. This time they're talking to Moose Jaw, uh, so I think a penalty on, on uh, the Steelers. So... Um, I think this one's going to, this is going to hold and put him in a, in a real good position. But a big, big gain, nice throw. Yeah. Um, put it right where he needed to, and the receiver made a good catch. Um, you know, contested a little bit at the end. Um, you're right, Poppy was there, and he kind of got a hand in there to try and knock it away, but um, the receiver held on. He got turned around a little bit, Poppy, didn't he? I don't think he saw the ball till the last minute, and it was just a great adjustment by uh, Tyron Ferguson Steele for Moose Jaw to make that catch down around the five-yard line. And a penalty uh, on top of it. It is going to be first and goal, regardless, for the uh, Moose Jaw Razorbacks. They lined Douglas up a few times today, I've noticed. They've lined Douglas up at quarterback rather than Ansel and work him out of the shotgun. And uh, it's just an interesting formation there. You know, uh, throwing a few kinks into the offense and maybe confusing the Swift Current defense a little bit as well. Well, and obviously he's a good athlete. He can move into multiple, multiple uh, locations. So... You know, I'm thinking they like that option for first him to be able to throw the ball at times, too. So it'll be first and a goal with two and a half to go in the first half. Ansel back at quarterback now. First and goal inside the five for Moose Jaw. They lead it 21-12. Ansel lost him. There's the handoff to Douglas, that same play, the end around. Cuts and jukes and jives his way into the end zone, and that'll be a four-yard touchdown run for Drake Douglas. I, I believe, if memory serves me right, Eldon, that's his third of the game, and all of them basically on that exact same play. Moose Jaw's uh, working that to perfection, and when you got a guy like Douglas who's shifty and quick and hard to bring down, um, it makes it even that you're executing the play well, and then you've got a guy like him who's real hard to tackle in open field, and it's burned Swift Current this afternoon a couple times. Yeah, and, and you see him move out. He you know, lines up as a slot back, and then they bring him on in the inside, and, and you know he's just 
there's been great blocking up front, but even when there have been guys there, he's been able to get some misses too. And that's what you're looking out, uh, looking for out of your key players. Point after is no good, so the score remains 27 to 12 with 2:12 to go in the first half here. 27-12, Moose Jaw Razorbacks lead the Swift Current. Lens Plumbing and Heating, Smitty Steelers. And this band of football game today on Shaw TV. We'll do a quick uh, first half scoring recap once it is halftime, Eldon. But uh, I would have to say now, is it, if uh, Swift Current is, a, it's a time to answer. They, if they can have a response here and maybe put some, they've got a couple minutes, they've got some uh, time to move the ball. But if they can make it a one score game going into halftime, it certainly sets up better for the third and fourth quarter for them. Yeah, it sure does. I mean, they, you need a big play. You need something to, to kind of keep you in it. Um, you know, they're still in the game. They're only down by two scores. Mm -hmm. But you just have to get something back where um, just to draw yourself a little bit closer, give you that little bit of that carrot for the second half. So we'll see if the uh, Swift Current offense has an answer here and can move the ball with uh, a couple minutes to go till halftime. 27-12, Moose Jaw leads it. And they will kick off from their own 35-yard line. It'll be number 20 for Moose Jaw. Doing the honors, that's Lane Johnson. Kickoff will come down to Vavra at his own 35. And he gets up to the 45. And he's dropped there. But decent field position for Swift Current to work from. With a couple of minutes to go. And uh, like I said, uh, if they could make it a one-score game at halftime, could, could make for an interesting second half. But they've got a couple of minutes to move the ball here. Well, they still have time, and that's the thing. You're trying to get something to happen. There's plenty of time with two minutes left to, to get a drive going. You know, for Moose Jaw, they'd be looking at it saying, can we get the ball back? And, yeah. and can we get it in the hands of our offense one more time? So uh, key series here. A couple turnovers by the Swift Current offense have certainly been to prove costly. Moose Jaw's turned them into 13 points. Uh, take those uh, off the board, and it's essentially a two-point ball game. Moberg wants to put it in the air. There's that flare pattern to Vavra. He makes some nice moves, busts it down the sideline. Still on his feet, breaking tackles, and a huge gain there down to the Moose Jaw 35-yard line. That's about a 30-yard gainer right there. There's that bread and butter play, the slant pattern out into the flat to Vavra. And he is deadly when he gets out there and able to break tackles. And uh, a big play there and a big first down, huge gain for the Swift Current Steelers. Moberg to Vavra. We've heard that a couple times this afternoon. Wouldn't you like to have Vavra and Douglas in your same offense? Is Vavra, he's a 14-year-old. He is, yeah. He's going to be okay by the time he's 16, 17 playing high school football. Derek Murdoch's probably <laughs> ready to sign him right now. Eh? <laughs> you could say the same for Drake Douglas. Yes, I'm sure that they'll be. Uh, he's a grade 10 guy, so probably could have been playing you know, high school this year in, in Moose Jaw, but when you look at his skill set, you'd think there, there would have had to have been room with, uh, with one of the programs up there, high school programs for him to be in the lineup. I'm sure they're all Central and Peacock and Vanier. They're all going to take a long look at him. I would say he'll have his options <laughs> yeah. next year if because uh, I believe that's the way it works. Once you get to high school, you have the chance yeah. where you want to go and yeah. um, what program you want to play with. So, um, you know, I think he's going to be a hot... Uh, hot sought after commodity next year for them as well so you know two two guys key guys in their team and you can tell that and um, you know it, it kind of becomes like a, a prize boat a little bit it's uh, who gets to who gets to swing last yeah they, I mean it's two good teams just like you say lining up and punching each other in the mouth right now and uh, so far Moose Jaws landed a couple more punches but a minute, minute 53 to go at 27 12 if Swift Current can score here um, I believe there's a timeout called possibly on the field, Eldon. I think uh, two minutes left in the half oh, here. Oh, yeah. so two-minute warning. Yeah, so I think they've kind of giving the teams a little bit of a chance to get recuperated and get going. And you know, if you look at this Swift Current team too, Vavra's had a, a, some big gains this afternoon. I, I, I would think he's got to be uh, 150 yards receiving probably already in the first half. And and the guy that's been uh, there to uh, to answer is Smith Schofer. He's a uh, He's been a guy that's been able to get out there and bring him down or maybe save some touchdowns. Yeah, Oberg wants to put it in the air again. Nice pass there and a reception by Friesen, but it's going to be a short gain, only a couple yards out into the left flat near us. It'll be second and about eight now down at the 32-yard uh, line for Swift Current. Two-yard gain, short pass there, second and eight Swift Current. Yeah, Smith Schofer would be up for a defensive player of the week honors probably. He's had to make some... Uh, some touchdown saving tackles in this first for first half and you know he's he's a good looking player and that big fumble return too 
So it'll be second and about eight at the 32-yard line for Swift Current. Moberg out of the shotgun. He's going to roll to his right. Can't find anybody open. Now he's looking. He sees Favre. He's got him open, and he's got him. It's a completed pass down inside the 10-yard line. That was a nice pass and run play there. You could see Favre waving at him. He opened up, and he said, I'm here. I am. And, and Moberg spotted him and got it to him, and a big play there and a big second down conversion on second and long for the Steelers. That's a big gainer inside the 10-yard line, and this is a drive that Swifter needed to answer late in the first half here to the uh, the 27 points on the board so far for Moose Jaw. Well, good patience from Moberg. I think he got to the outside. He was still looking, kept his eyes upfield, and Vavra did what you're supposed to. If your quarterback's scrambling, if you're the guy that's uh, short, you just go long and try to get open. He's going to put it in the air again. First down near the goal line. Oh, and it falls incomplete. Good reaction there. A nice pass there. He had it momentarily. That was, uh, was that Tyrell Gardner for uh, Swift Current? Tyrell Gardner right at the goal line, but a good defensive play there to break it up, and Gardner couldn't hang on. It'll be second down and goal from the, uh, about the nine-yard line of Moose Jaw. Well, and, and in fairness, Smith Schofer was there again as he, you know, he stepped into he the, the hole as a safety, and, and uh, whether Gardner saw him coming, heard him coming, whatever, um, he ended up uh, laying a lick on him and, and uh, forced the ball out. Second down now in goal. Moberg over the middle of Avra, but he's not going to get to the end zone. Good coverage there. Smith Schofer there again, along with another Moose Jaw defender. And it's going to be uh, third down and decision time, I guess, here now for uh, the Swift Current coach, Brian Kluge. Uh, what do you do? Do you, do you attempt a field goal? Or do you say, you know what, even if we... Do you take, try to take some points or do you go for the touchdown? Well, right now he's calling a timeout to think about <laughs> think it, about I think. It. And, and uh, my guess is they're going to go for it. I mean, at this stage of the game, uh, you know, you want to punch it into the end zone if you can, give yourself a chance. And, and, and in fairness, their offense has moved the ball pretty Very well good. in this first half. Yeah. So, you know, you're hoping you can find that one open receiver in this situation that you can find them. And, and uh, you know, give yourself a chance to, to punch one in and get a little bit of momentum going into the half. Moose Jaw is a team, too, that if you make mistakes against them, you can tell they're going to burn you. A couple of fumbles and a special teams, a kickoff return, an opening kickoff return, and two fumbles, and that's 20 points the other way for this Moose Jaw Razorbacks team. And they're a the type of team that you make mistakes against them. They're very well coached. They're very disciplined. They play their systems and special, all three, offense, defense, and special teams very well. And uh, they have capitalized on some swift current mistakes this afternoon. And often that's football. It's a game within a game. Yep, big play here. Big play here. They're going to go for it. It's third and goal. One minute to go on the uh, penalty flags down, and we'll see what this is. It's either going to be offside against Moose Jaw or it. procedure against Swift Current, and it looks like uh, possibly for Moose Jaw, Bradley Hickox, the big defensive lineman there, might have jumped a little bit early. Yeah, it's definitely offs offside. When you see a defensive lineman banging themselves on their own helmet after you, it's a pretty good uh, <laughs> pretty good opportunity to think they might have think, thought they jumped offside. So given where that was, and they've moved it down to the one-yard line now, um, it's third and basically a yard from the one. I wonder if that uh, changes up the play, though, if they're going to stick with the same play that uh, they called. We'll see. It looks like uh, Moberg's going to go to the... So here it is, third and goal from the one after the offside penalty. They give to Friesen right up the middle, and I don't think he's going to get there. But there's another penalty flag down, and we'll have to see. Uh, did Moose Jaw jump again, maybe line up offside, and some, or maybe a procedure penalty against Swift Current, but I know sometimes... Uh, both uh, lines are, uh, are get a little bit antsy there when it's a third and goal from the one-yard line, and we'll see what the referee calls. It looks like it's offside on Moose Jaw again because it's definitely going to be... Uh, they, 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 get, they, they got that. They maybe lined up or jumped again. Yeah, I think they definitely did. That was the call. So it is going to be third and goal again. Another shot inside of a minute, less than a minute to go. Kluche out of the shotgun. He's going to give to Friesen again, and he's not going to get there again. That huge defensive stand, goal line stand there for that Moose Jaw defense after a couple penalties kept Swift Kern in business. But once again, the, the Moose Jaw defense has just been uh, clogging up that run. Swift Kern can't get it going. I'm not exactly certain on that one, Ken. I, I, it was third and one mm -hmm. from the one, and they jumped offside with that. I'm thinking that should have been a first down, but that's just me kind of looking at that, that you would have got a first down play on that. But... Obviously, it's, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what the call is on that, uh, but they did call it third and goal again. And uh, I guess, too, I mean, 
maybe the play too are you do you just not try to plunge it straight ahead or uh rather than taking the snap out of the shotgun i mean it's easy to be an armchair quarterback up here but regardless it's a huge defensive stand for moose jaw and they'll uh scrimmage now from their own one yard line and just try to get it out of the shadows of their own goal post and they hand off to douglas and drake douglas doing what he does best and that's running open field and break tackles and he's going to get up near the 10 and he's going to have about a a nine-yard gain there. Or pardon me, it was Bell, not uh, Drake Douglas. Bryden Bell with a nice carry there and a big gain of about nine. Second down. And really, Moose Jaw here, you just want to grind out the clock and get to halftime with that 15-point lead. The only thing that got in his way that time was his own blocker, actually. It kind of slowed him down a little bit. But otherwise, real nice gain as he got to, um, you know, got to the outside again and got into that second level in the Swift Current defense, so... Again, great blocking by Moose Jaw up front, and they've been able to open the holes all day. They have been effective running the ball. Ansel out of the shotgun. No, it's going to be Douglas now. They're working this. Douglas is going to work out of the shotgun, and he's going to take it himself. Gets to the outside, gets around. Steps around Declan Poppy, juking and jiving. Now he gets back to the outside, and look at this kid make moves. He turns something or nothing into something there. A big gain. He's finally... Pushed out of touch out there. Uh, Swift Current's number 75, Elijah Harden, gets him out of bounds. But uh, when it looked like he was going to be stopped for nothing, he uh, is a slippery character out there in the open field. And he got to the outside and turns it into about a uh, six or seven yard gain and a big first down. That's a situation where you just need more hats on the ball. Um, you know, I think they, they ended up, uh, did a real good job. Declan Poppy sealed the corner and, mm -hmm. and turned him back inside. And they had some pursuit coming from Rylan Schomer. But once you got to that point, there was nothing coming from inside um, to basically corral him. They turned him back. They did everything they were supposed to. But he was able to find his way back and, and navigate through the maze of players that were there. And you just need to get more guys to the ball. He's one of those guys you have to gang tackle. Very hard to bring down one-on-one. -on -one. So it will be first down. Ansel now back at quarterback. First and 10 uh, Razorbacks. Ansel out of the shotgun. Flares it outside. Got his man out there. Nice pass and run play. And a big gainer there. That is number 23 for Moose Jaw. Xander Montgomery with a big play there. Uh, catch made by number 23, Xander Montgomery. Brought down. Yeah, you bet. And a big gain there. That's about a 15, 20 yard pass and run play. And once again, it was Elijah Harden bringing him down, or uh, he could have been gone there. Xander Montgomery with a nice play there and a nice pass and run play as uh, Ansel hits him for a big gainer up to the 46 yard line. He's a nice looking option for them as well. I mean, he's a big, thick, uh, thick guy. And, and you know, uh, in a situation on this offense, doesn't maybe get as many touches as others do, but you know, he, he's a good looking option. Even uh, earlier when you know, he's able to pound through um, with some tough, uh, tough yardage up front too. Earlier we saw that in the first half. This will be the last play of the first half. And they give it to Bell down the left side. Or down the, yeah, the far left side. He breaks it to the outside. Still on his feet, trying to get to the end zone. But a good play there by the Swift Current defense to bring him down when it looked like Bell could have another chance of scoring. And that would really be the last thing. <laughs> the Steelers would not want to give up another score uh, with, uh, with the, on the last play of the first half. But that is the uh, end of the first half, 27-12. to 12 is the score at halftime uh, for the uh, Moose Jaw Razorbacks over the Swift Current, Lens Plumbing and Heating, Smitty Steelers. And Eldon, um, I mean, you look at it's Vavra for Swift Current, and uh, really uh, Douglas has been a big cog for uh, that Moose Jaw team, Drake Douglas, and Red Vavra for the uh, Steelers. Well, Drake Douglas with three touchdowns in that first half, um, you know, all three offensive touchdowns, uh, running plays, uh, he, he's, he's been very, very good for them. They also got the uh, kickoff return touchdown from Johnson, um, from Lane Johnson, right after the, the Steelers had scored on their opening drive. Um, but Vavra, one touchdown for the Steelers and Tyrell Gardner for the other one. Good first half, lots of offense. Um, both offenses moved the ball pretty well. Um, just obviously, Moose Jaw got a couple important stops. Steelers marched there at the end of the first half but couldn't punch it in. 27 to 12, it is the score. The uh, Moose Jaw Razorbacks leading the Swift Current Lens Plumbing and Heating Smitty Steelers. It is halftime. We're going to take a break. You're uh, watching Bantam Football from Swift Current on Shaw TV.
We're getting set to go for the second half here in this football game. Bantam football, beautiful Saturday afternoon in Swift Current. Kennedy, along with Eldon Moberg on the Shaw TV broadcast. Thanks for joining us, guys. 27-12, the Moose Jaw Razorbacks lead the Swift Current, Lens Plumbing and Heating, Smitty Steelers. In what's been a pretty good first half of football, actually a great half for first half of football. But Eldon, there's always a game within a game. And you look back, a couple fumbles by Swift Current and specialty teams have really been about a 20-point swing in favor of Moose Jaw. And they're full marks for it, too. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's actually a big key on it. So they haven't made any mistakes offensively. Um, you know, Moose Jaw has been very precise when they've had the ball. I mean, the ball's been in Swift Current's hands more uh, just from a standpoint that they did have that kickoff return for a touchdown and, and uh, which took it out of their hands. But when they've been on offense, they've been surgical. They've been able to move the ball pretty much at will down up and down the field. And for the Steelers, you know, they've moved the ball real well. Unfortunately, they've really had three turnovers if you include the turnover at, on downs uh, at, three, the yeah, end, yeah, at the yeah. end of the first half. And, uh, you know, where they were at the one yard line and they couldn't punch it in. And then the other two turnovers as well. So, you know, th those types of things. And then sometimes that is a little bit of the experience of the teams, right? You, you know, we talked about it earlier in the game, Moose being an older team with more grade 10 um, age players. And, uh, you know, they've been able to, to, to execute very well on both sides of the ball and, and not make any mistakes where the younger Steelers team have, have uh, you know, been in situations where they, that hasn't been the case and, and uh, Moose Jaw's taken advantage. Drake Douglas is at a big afternoon. He's a key part of this Moose Jaw team. They're very well coached. They play their systems and uh, all three facets of the game very well. And, and you can see why they're three and oh, and then you got you got kids like Douglas in the lineup. He's got three touchdowns. Yeah, and obviously in the second half, the Steelers are gonna have to find a way to shut him down and, and you know obviously punch, some, punch it in themselves, but uh, it's gonna be a key to make sure he doesn't keep uh, rolling. We're underway here in the second half. Swift Current kicking off. It is Douglas on the kickoff return. Breaks the tackle up over his 50. Midfield still on his feet. And there he goes, showing you why he's a dominant player with a huge return to set up Moose Jaw in business down at the Swift Current 37-yard line or 38-yard line. There is a penalty flag down, and I didn't catch it, uh, what it was for, but we'll get it sorted out here. Two penalty flags, actually, and, and you know generally on a return, um, you're expecting it's a legal block or holding or something of that nature. Head referee Mike Zaretsky directing traffic. It looks like it might be coming back for an illegal block. It is going to be coming back. Illegal block against Moose Jaw, but nonetheless, Douglas showing you there why the dynamic player that he is on that return. If he gets some open field, look out. He can make things happen. He can, and, and Shane Friesen did a pretty good job on that one, I thought, mm -hmm. of getting down there and, and, and putting in himself in a position to make a tackle. Um, but Douglas was able to shirk that and... Mm. and, and basically right around the area where, where Friesen um, probably would have brought him down is about where that happened. So um, I guess it becomes a wash in the end. So it is a penalty for a legal block against uh, at the point of where it happened. It brings the ball back to the Moose Jaw 51 yard line rather than the Swift Current 38. First and 10 Razorbacks at the 51 yard line. Ansel, the quarterback, will work out of the shotgun. It's got Douglas in motion. Gives off to Montgomery. Inside Montgomery's gonna have positive yardage on first down, about an eight yard gain. Xander Montgomery, the ball carrier there for Moose John. He will have about an eight yard gain, a good gain, positive yards on first down into Swift Current territory at the 51. It'll be second and two. You know, he's one of the, the grade nine guys in this team, uh, an 03 born player, and, and he looks like he's gonna be a good one. He, he is. He, um, you know, real powerful guy up front. We talked about him a bit in the first half, and just like his body type as a running back, um, you know, to, to go get some of those tough yardage, uh, in those tough yardage situations. And that one clawed off eight, good first round gain. Second down and two. Moose Jaw, the Swift 51 yard line. Ansel. Going to hand off to Bell inside. Bell's got room to go. And he's down with a big gainer. That's going to be a gain of about 15 before he's wrapped up down around the 36-yard uh, line of the uh, Steelers. And a first down in the Moose Jaw offense uh, with a couple back-to-back -back big plays here. Good tackle from Elijah Harden. He was able to, to bring him down at the end. Nice, sure tackle. You know, the problem is by the time that, uh, you know, he was able to get there, they were, you know, into the second or third level of the, the Swift Current defense. So, again, great blocking in the interior by this uh, Razorbacks offensive line. First and 10 at the 36 for the Razorbacks. Early in the third quarter here on a beautiful Saturday in Swift Current. 
Ansel out of the shotgun. Takes the snap. Hands off to Bell inside again. Bell's got room to go. And some powerful running there by Bell. And it looks like he's going to have another first down inside the Swifter and 25-yard line. It's going to be a gain of about 12. But those quick hitters right up the middle are working for Moose Jaw on this drive. Well, and Steelers defensive end Luke Nelson was able to get a hand on him and grab him by the jersey. But... Uh, you know, the running back was able to drag him for about <laughs> another five yards as he was holding on from behind. So the other thing that I think that Razorbacks have done a real good job is they've been able to get uh, their offensive linemen into the, into the linebacking core. And we haven't really seen a lot of those tackles from, um, you know, the Steelers linebackers without some depth already in the run by the time they've been able to make them. First and 10, ball at the 24-yard line. Ansel hands off to Montgomery. Montgomery with another big hole off the right side this time. And he should have another first down as he crashes down around the 12-yard line of Swift Current. And they are just pounding that ball up the middle now. Well, that's kind of what I expected that they would do, actually. I mean, and they've done a great job of running. I mean, they haven't been exclusive just trying to pound it up the middle. I, I've really kind of thought that this, uh, this Mushaw Razorbacks offense has had a little more creativity than probably what the Weyburn offense had um, last weekend. They were very much just, we're going to blow you up in the middle and, and pound it through. Um, these guys have done a good job of mixing it up, and I think that's really opened up the playbook um, considerably for them. Another first down, or second, and they're going to call it second in inches here from around the 15-yard uh, line. They're going to give it to Bell, and Bell's going to have a first down as he goes right up the middle for a gain of about five inside the Swift Current 10 to about the eight. So it, it is going to be a gain of about five or six, and it'll be a uh, first and goal situation for Moose Jaw and a nice opening drive for them to start the second half. Well, and Lamar and, and Harden, Harden actually combined on that one to the two linebackers. I just talked about, uh, you know, allowing them get, uh, you know, probably a little depth. But in that play, they did a good job of, you know, kind of they still got the first down, but they, they did, you know, hold them to probably a less than five-yard gain. So uh, a little bit better job on the on the defensive front. First and goal, Swift Current at the, or Moose Jaw, pardon me, at the Swift Current nine-yard line. Ansel out of the shotgun. Fakes to uh, Montgomery and gives to Bell around the left side. Bell, touchdown. They use some misdirection there too when they do use that counter going right or left. They, uh, they use some misdirection. Fake Montgomery and what it does is it, it, it when you run that play and then fake it and go the other way, use that counter, it maybe mixes up the defense a little bit and they're thinking Montgomery, Montgomery, Montgomery. Fake to him, give to Bell and uh, that was the... Uh, that was the Bryden Bell and the Xander Montgomery <laughs> drive. That one was, Eldon. Yeah, that, that was just a well-executed executed play again. And, and um, you know, they got him to the outside. You could tell that the Steelers defenders really didn't even know who had the ball. Um, there were guys kind of running the opposite direction even when he was right there. So well-executed. They've done a great job on offense all day. Lane Johnson with the point after. And... Uh, they eat it up, take about uh, five and a half minutes off the clock on that drive, Moose Jaw does. Six and a half to go in the third quarter, and they open up a 34-12 lead. The Moose Jaw Razorbacks over the uh, Swift Current. Lens Plumbing and Heating, Smitty Steelers. Moose Jaw's got a big physical offensive line up there too, Eldon. And of course, I'm always, as a former old lineman myself, I got to give props to the big guys in the trenches. The Hoggies for Moose Jaw are doing a good job, and... I mean, they just, uh, they showed it there, uh, you know, opening up uh, some big holes and lots of room for Montgomery and Bell on that drive. Yeah, I think it doesn't matter what level of football you're at. I mean, you, you still do win football games in the trenches yeah. with your offensive yeah. and defensive lines. And uh, there's no doubt that um, on offense, the Razorbacks offensive line has been, has been dominant in this game. And uh, you know, you have to find ways to counter that, but right now they haven't found those answers. That was a very well executed drive by the Razorbacks. Their full marks for their 34 12 lead right now. This is going to be freezing with the kickoff return for Swift Current. Nice return there. Breaks a couple tackles, steps up over the 50 yard line for Swift Current to about the 51 or 52, and some good field position now for the Steelers. And We'll see if their offense in Moberg uh, has an answer here. We're about midway through the third quarter, and you got to start thinking with a 34-12 lead, Swift Current probably only has about four or five offensive possessions left, so you want to make the most of them, don't you? Yeah, the, the only thing you can't do, though, in this situation is try to score a 22-point touchdown, right? Yeah. You, you have to just, just whittle away, away at yeah. it, and, 
and kind of keep in mind that we just all we can do is one series at a time and, and do the best we can to try and cl uh, bite into this lead. Still lots of time left, you know, six and a half way through the uh, second. Going to be a sweep to Vavar around the left side. He's going to use his wheels and get out there. Pretty good job of tying it up or uh, shutting it down and stringing it out by the Moose Jaw defense when it looked like he had run to ro room to run. Penalty flags fly, a uh, three-yard gain about for Vavar, but we'll have to see what this penalty is. Head uh, referee Mike Soretsky and his crew will sort it out. Looks like a gain of about two or three, and, and it did look like Vavra had room to run. He's a speedster, but that Moose Jaw defense has strung, strung it out and really uh, shut down any attempt at a running game by Swift Current today. They've, the bread and butter has been uh, putting it in the air. A horse collar tackle on that play and, uh, on Moose it Jaw. It yeah. was a little bit up high, and, and as a result, uh, you know, a 15-yard penalty and a first down. So, you know, again, they've been able to move the ball a little bit sometimes with with the help of uh, Moose Jaw penalties, but puts them in a great field position. And again, just, you know, you got to keep marching, got to stay in it, and offensively uh, try and keep your, your, your team in it as much as you can. A horse collar tackle call against Moose Jaw. Puts Swift Current first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Outside to Vavra. Can he break a tackle? Vavra's got room down the sidelines, and he's going to score. Or he steps out of bounds. So once again, it was Schofer out there, Smith Schofer, when it looked like uh, Vavra might score. Smith Schofer gets out there again. How many times have we seen that Smith Schofer preventing a touchdown when uh, Grant Vavra gets to the outside and just stepped on the side? <laughs> he was trying to deke him and just stepped on the sidelines there, just stepped out of bounds. And uh, great for the official. He was right on top of it there and whistled it right away. Yeah, it was one of those situations where he's seen this movie play before. So he said, this time I'm not going to try and beat him. I'm going to try and cut back on him. And he did a great job of cutting back. But unfortunately, like you said, stepped out of bounds. So, But still, great field position, opportunity to punch it in and get back in it. It'll be first and goal inside the five now. Lundgren over the middle. Oh, or pardon me, Lundgren. It was... Uh, Moberg over the middle, looking for number 29 there, and that was uh, Aiden Murray he was looking for. Pass falls incomplete. Second and goal now, ball uh, right around the four-yard line for uh, Swift Current. Second and goal. And we have seen that battle a couple times this afternoon. Smith Schofer and Favre, they've had some good battles this afternoon, especially on those sideline passes. Second and goal. Moberg will work out of the shotgun. Looks over the middle again, and it falls incomplete. Good coverage there. And so a third and goal situation here, and you uh, you got to go for it here again if you're uh, the Swift Current Steelers, Eldon. Well, it takes you back to the end of the first half when they had this opportunity. If you punch that in, yeah. it's a different game, and, and they really need to punch this one in as well and give themselves a chance just to, you know, stay within striking distance. There's times where Swift Current has really moved the ball, and the Moose Jaw defense has bent but they've made some big stances and they, have, and they haven't, there's a few times where they, they haven't broke and that's been the key for them and their, their uh, lead this afternoon. Moberg out of the shotgun, out into the flats and this time he's got a touchdown. I believe that was Murray. Was it Aiden Murray out there? Garrett Kurtz. Garrett Kurtz, pardon me. Garrett Kurtz, number 25, who's uh, made some plays this afternoon for Swift Current and that was exactly what the... Uh, what the Steelers needed, Eldon, they needed to, to score there with, uh, you know, under four to go in the third quarter. They needed an answer now and try to keep this within striking distance as we, we, we head towards the end of three. Well, I thought a real nice call because Rhett Vavra was lined up to that side and you could just see every Moose Jaw defender wanted to know yeah. where he was at and then threw it to the, you know, to Kurtz in the flat and, you know, he was wide open and, and, and basically walked into the end zone. So Kurtz with a four-yard touchdown reception. And Swift Current's going to go for two here. Moberg out of the shotgun. Back of the end zone for Vavra. And what a nice two-point convert there. Puts it right on the money. Vavra makes no mistake. Hauls it in. And just like that, it's a two-score game. 34-20 to 20 now with 3.43 to go. The Steelers needed that. That was, a, that was a big, a huge drive there. Penalty aided the horse collar tackle call. If you're a fan of offensive football... Yeah. I think that uh, you'd be happy with what you see today because there has been lots of offense. If you're Bill Belichick and yeah. a good defensive coordinator, uh, Chris Jones, Chris Jones yeah. you might not be as excited about what you're seeing because the offenses have really uh, 
Kind of sliced and diced both ways. And that's football. You never know what you're going to get. I mean, even just Friday night, the Riders win 18-17 in a real defensive battle. And then the university game, the Saskatchewan, the Rams beat the Huskies 50-40. to U of R Rams beat the Huskies. They combined for 90 points. So you had uh, one game that was all off it, just a shootout up in Saskatoon. And then the game in Ottawa that was just two defenses punching each other in the mouths. And we've had more of a shootout here in this Bantam game this afternoon. Yeah, I, th I don't think we'll get 50 to 40 no. only because there's not enough uh, time in our games. But uh, anyways, it's, it's still exciting and good to see that the kids on offense can execute because that's usually the toughest thing to find. Nice, nice cut downfield coverage there. Penalty flag flies, but a nice downfield coverage there was Drake Douglas on the return, the kickoff return for Swift Current, and good coverage by Shane Friesen for, the, uh, for uh, Swift Current. Penalty flag flies. I'm not sure what it's going to be. It looked like it may. They may call. A, they're going to call a horse collar tackle. Or, winning number for two hundred dollars. Yeah, they're going to call. Uh, looks like they're calling an unnecessary. Yeah, uh, wasn't unnecessary roughness. Maybe a horse collar tackle this time against Swift Current, which will give uh, Moose Jaw good field position at the 51 yard line. But. We'll see if the Swift Current defense can make a stand here now. Well, after you score and you get yourself back into it, I mean, that's what you need, really. Ideally, you'd like to see a two and out and you get the ball back, but um, they've got their work cut out for them. They really haven't been able to find that outside of one time. Today, they've been able to get a two and out, but other than that, Moose Jaw has been able to, you know, find ways to get it done. And we'll see if Moose Jaw continues to grind the ball and just pound it on the run. They go out of this formation a lot a to lot. Douglas. They've been able to bring him in and... And there's the play to Bell, but this time it's read well by the Swiffer defense. And he's actually going to lose a yard or two there. That was a, uh, a great play by uh, Swift Kern. Luke Nelson Luke with Nelson. a real good play. He was able to shoot the gap, get there, get a hold of him, um, and hold him up. He got a little bit of help from his friends, but a uh, real good play. Luke's, uh, you know, one of the great nines in this team uh, up front to the defensive line, and, and it's guys like that that you, you need to make some plays. And, you know, that's a big play. Puts him into a second and 12, and when you're trying to get that two and out, that's, you know, that's a good start. Two and a half to go third quarter, second and 12 at the 53-yard line of Swift Current. Now after a two-yard loss on the give to Bell, Ansel will work out of the shotgun. He's going to put it in the air. Looks long. Coverage is there, and it falls incomplete. As We've seen that play before. Ansel was looking for uh, his receiver, Devin Bowman, out there, and Bowman actually has a, uh, a touchdown, I believe, this afternoon for Mushar. He's actually made some nice catches, but it falls incomplete, and that is exactly uh, what the doctor ordered for the Swift Current defense. A two and out, and they're going to get the ball back with two to go here in the third quarter. And good coverage from Aiden Gatsky. He mm -hmm. was right there for the Steelers. Um, you know, the, it, it forced uh, Bowman to have to go up behind him to try to get to it, and um, you know, he, he's a good-looking receiver. He actually gave it a, you know, a good effort. He got up high, tried to get one hand on it. But, um, yeah, exactly. Steelers got their two and out. It'll be a punt now. Vavra is going to take it back around his own 15-yard line, up near the 20. Breaks a tackle. Gets outside, but once again, <laughs> it's a battle up there. He's up to the 20-yard line. Who makes the tackle on him? Smith, Schofer. We've seen that uh, a game within a game. Smith, Schofer, and Vavra have battled all afternoon. I think those two kids are probably going to walk over and shake each other's hands at the end of this game because they have uh, squared off big time throughout the course of the game. I don't know if you noticed it, but they, Smith, Schofer, actually on that on the, the long he run before, he did go over and kind of give him a pat in the back when he <laughs> stepped out of bounds because, I mean, they've had a battle all day for sure. And I would think once they get to the high school level, these guys will know each other pretty well. They respect each other, no doubt about it. So it'll be first and 10, Swift Current at their 26-yard line. 34-20, one minute to go now in the third quarter. Moberg's going to work out of the shotgun. Throws and oh, it's picked off. Threw into some heavy coverage there and a big turnover again by this Moose Jaw defense. Tough break for the Swift Current offense after their D had made a, uh, a, big, uh, a big stand. A tough turnover there for the Swift Current offense. That is a tough turnover. That's one you don't want. And, and I think just a situation where, you know, trying to force the ball a little bit too much, there really wasn't anything there. Um, you know, Moberg got flushed to the outside a little bit and decided he was going to try to put it into, into Vavra's hands. And, you know, Rhett's been able to make plays and... and in a lot of situations, he's able to do something, but there was just too, ma too many Moose Jaw guys in that area, too much coverage, and one that he probably would like to have back and, and could have just uh, probably ate and said, we'll live to fight another day. 
So it'll be first and 10. Moose Jaw on the Swiftcar 33 yard line. Ansel gives around the right side to Douglas. Douglas finds a hole, breaks it to the outside. He's got wheels down the sideline, still on his feet. Jukes and cuts back inside, dancing towards the end zone. And he's in for the touchdown. But we do have a penalty flag down, so we'll see what this call is here, Eldon. But Drake Douglas uh, showing you why he's, he's probably our uh, player of the game, at least offensively so far. That, that, if it stands, will be his fourth touchdown of the game. Drake Douglas with the wheels down the right side, and it's a holding call against Moose Jaw, so it looks like this one is going to come back. Yeah, it, uh, it definitely was coming back. When you saw where, that, where the flag came yeah. from, um, that's... Uh, Virtually always a holding penalty when you see it on a running play coming from the you know the back uh, the back referee he's got a real good uh, view of it and and it went out early so you, you kind of thought it was coming back when the flag flies in the offensive backfield if it flies late and it's on a pass it's usually roughing the passer when it flies right during the running play as it's as it's as it's happening it's a lot of times it's holding so that was a holding call and it is a uh, it's a five-yard penalty, or is it a... I believe it's a 10-yard penalty. 10-yard penalty, so it'll be first and 20 now for uh, Moose Jaw back at the Swift Current 42-yard line. Ansel will work out of the shotgun. He's got motion again from Douglas. We'll see if they do it again. And they, this time, Douglas is going to throw. It's a flea flicker. Fools up the Swift Current offense. What a play there by uh, the... Moose Jaw Razorbacks, Douglas with the pass down there to, it looks like, who's the Moose Jaw player that caught that ball? I'm thinking Zachary Kluche, or no, pardon me, I'm looking at the wrong roster here. Tyron Ferguson Steele. Tyron Ferguson Steele, number 16. I could see the six, I couldn't see the one. That was a flea flicker there, and uh, when uh, sometimes the run sets up the pass. So a great call by the uh, Moose Jaw offense there. They hand it off to uh, Douglas, and he puts it in the air in a big game. Tyron Ferguson steal, and that's the end of the third quarter. We will take a break after three quarters of play. It's 34-20. Moose Jaw leading Swift Current in this Bantam football game on Shaw TV. So we're back into the final quarter here. Moose Jaw will be set up first and goal at the Swift Current five-yard line. After that uh, flea flicker play, to number 16, Tyron Ferguson steal Ansel. Hands off to Montgomery, and he goes right up the middle, and it's a touchdown. And they didn't take long to capitalize on that big flea flicker play. Montgomery, Xander Montgomery gets into the end zone. Five-yard touchdown run, and Mushta opens up a 40 to 20 lead on the first play of the fourth quarter. And just power football, yeah. you know, we're just going to, we've got here and we're just going to pound it down your throat and and really they've done a great job of that all day. They've owned that line of scrimmage uh, with their offensive line. So um, pretty simple football. Uh, the play before though was, was very well executed. Very well executed play. The uh, flea flicker to Douglas. Point after by Johnson is good and uh, Swift Current will, or Moose Jaw will open up a 41-20 lead over the Swift Current Bantam Steelers. Early in the fourth quarter in this Bantam football game, beautiful Saturday afternoon in uh, Swift Current for football. And Eldon, I mean, if you look back, this Moose Jaw Razorback team has uh, made Swift Current pay dearly for any mistakes they've made this afternoon. I mean, three turnovers, three touchdowns, the stand at the end of the first half to uh, you know keep Swift Current out of the end zone, a kickoff return. So. There's always a game within a game, and Moose Jaw has capitalized on the turnovers and the mistakes by Swift Current and their opportunities. They have, and that's what good football teams do. There's a reason this team is 3-0, and and, and uh, you know they're showing that. They're, they're formidable. I mean, they're, they've got good size up front on their lines. They've got skill players to be able to make some things happen. Um, just in seeing them you know, through this portion of the year when I've seen pretty much everybody but Estevan, uh, they definitely would be the team to beat at this stage in the season. Kickoff comes down to Red Vavra. He's up uh, to his 50-yard line. Up near midfield, still fighting for yards, but a good return there by Vavra, and he's going to have the Steelers in good field position here, and you know they'd like to come out and uh, try to get some points on the board here and chip away as we're into the final quarter, and they trail it now by 21. Need to, uh, you know, need to start uh, taking advantage of every offensive series they have. 
Good run back by Vavre. He, he realized, again, great containment by the Razorbacks to kind of force him to the inside. And he just decided, I'm going to put my head down and see if I can get some extra yards and, and got it up to midfield. So again, they start in good field position with a chance to try and claw back. So it'll be first and 10 right near midfield, pretty much right at midfield for the Steelers. Moberg out of the shotgun. Early fourth quarter. It's going to be the end of round to Vavra. Vavra makes one man miss. Now he gets to the outside, and he's got room to go. Red Vavra down the sidelines, turns on the Jets. And who's there with the tackle? <laughs> that has been a fun battle, and they have respect for each other. It's Smith Schofer for Moose Jaw, and Vavra and I have enjoyed watching that matchup all day. Smith Schofer has uh, made some... Touchdown saving tackles. Uh, that's about the third or fourth today on Vavra. It seems like every time number seven for Swift Currents anywhere near the ball, number nine in red isn't far behind. And they get up after almost every play now and pat each other on the back. Good news and bad news on that, I guess, if you're Moose Jaw. The, the good news is, is Smith, uh, Smith Schofer has had a great day. Um, and uh, that's, you're obviously, you're pleased with that if you're your coaching staff. The bad news is you'd really not, you'd really prefer that your free safety didn't have to make all of these tackles. Yeah. Um, you know, generally speaking, you're hoping that you're, you're shutting guys down a little bit earlier. And, you know, it, if we really actually looked at this without Smith Schofer back there to make those tackles, the quick strike of the Swift Current offense, Red they, they would have scored. Uh, I mean, they would be right in this game you because they've had those chances yeah. where they haven't capitalized yep. because he's made some some ta uh, touchdown saving tackles. It's been a fun battle to watch. Moberg's going to put it in the air, and he's got his man open. He's going to score just like that. He's into the end zone for a touchdown. That is number 29, Aiden Murray with the touchdown catch. Beautiful pass and run play there. It'll go for 34 yards. And that coming with 10.23 to go in the fourth quarter, and that is just what this Swift Current offense needed. A couple big plays and a quick strike, but you go back to the play that set that up. Moberg to Murray there. You go back to the play that set that up. It looked like Vavra could have been dropped easily in the backfield, but him and Douglas are similar players. Very shifty, very quick in the open field. Gets down the sidelines and turns it into a huge gainer. Smith Schofer has to make the tackle, and then they strike there. That was a nice play from uh, Moberg to Murray on that 34-yard pass and, and uh, run score play. And they're going to go for two again here to try to get a little closer. Moberg, back of the end zone, and he's got his man there. Garrett Kurtz. Garrett Kurtz with the two-point convert. And just like that, it's 41-28. Swift Current answers right back, that quick strike offense, and keeps it within striking distance. And now, I mean, if you're, if you're the Swift Current team or the Moose Jaw team, you're seeing how huge some of those turnovers look right now. And maybe if you could have a couple of those back, this football game might be, uh, might be uh, you know, a different... Uh, it might be a different story. Well, I'm real excited for Aiden Murray. Um, he's been a guy that's been in the Swift Current Minor football program right from the very beginning. He's the same age as my son, uh, a grade nine guy. And that's his first touchdown that he's had in his second year with the Steelers. And I'm sure he'll be excited about that uh, at the end of the day for both he and Tyrell Gardner, both of them with touchdowns today, their first of the season. So um, nice to see that when you get a chance to spread the ball around to those guys. Well, Swift Kern will kick off now after that 34-yard touchdown pass to Aiden Murray from Carter Moberg. Kick is down. It's going to come right to Drake Douglas. This guy's dangerous. Looks for an opening. Cuts inside. Down inside Swift Kern territory to about the 49-yard line. And it'll be first and 10. Great field position for Moose Jaw to work with. Eldon, I, 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 I've got to say I'm impressed with the accuracy, the passing accuracy of... Uh, of Carter, and it's obviously something he works on. He's got a good arm, and he's a very accurate passer. Obviously, he spends a lot of time throwing the pigskin. Well, he had the luxury last year um, as a first year to play a lot. They had two quarterbacks, and one, one of the two quarterbacks got hurt early. And, uh, and so he really saw, as a first-year guy, he saw a lot of, a lot of touches, a lot of the, the game last year as a first year. And, and, I mean, obviously, coming back this year just gives you that confidence that you can get the job done and... and and he has the confidence of his offensive coordinator. He calls a lot of his own plays, which is, I think, unique for this age group. No doubt. First and 10 at the 49-yard line. The gift to Bell off the left side. Bell cuts it inside. He's a shifty runner up the middle, breaks tackles. And he's going to have a first down down around the Swift Current 36-yard line. But 
Bryden Bell, not a big guy, but he runs with authority and really carries that ball with some power, even though he's not the biggest guy out there. Well, he reminds you a lot of Douglas, actually. He's got, nice, he's got nice quick feet, uh, about similar size. And uh, they've got the three-headed monster, you know, where they've got between, you know, Douglas and, and Bell and then Montgomery. Um, you know, they've got three guys that can carry the ball. And, you know, when you've got an offensive line that's creating holes like their offensive line has all day long, it makes life a lot easier for you when you're not facing that traffic in the backfield. So, um, you know, I think those guys probably should all take the O-line out for some for a steak <laughs> supper or something, I think. Back when they get back home to Moose Jaw tonight. Ansel hands off to Montgomery. Montgomery's got room right up the middle. Xander Montgomery, the big, powerful running back there for Moose Jaw. And he uh, rambles for a big gainer down near the Swift Current 50-yard line. And this Moose Jaw offense is on the move again. They are, and, and, and that's the problem when you've got three guys who they're, you know, basically are all getting touches. You don't know where the ball's coming from. You know, is it coming from the tailback? Is it coming from the fullback? Is it coming from the slot back coming through, you know, on an end around? And they've used uh, Douglas in many different uh, ways in the formations too, as a quarterback sometimes and a wildcat and lots of different things. But, you know, those three guys have been real impressive. Um, and... Uh, you know, throw Bowman in, who's made some plays as a receiver as well. They do have some weapons on offense. They've got several weapons. Douglas out of the quarterback position now, out of the shotgun. Looks like a keeper play. He's going to take it around the left side. Breaks a few tackles. Still on his feet, and he's down inside. Touchdown. Drake Number Douglas with his... It's going to be about a 15-yard, 16, 17-yard touchdown run for Drake Douglas, and uh, I believe that's his fifth of the game, Eldon. Drake Douglas working out of the uh, quarterback position there, the shotgun, and Takes it in for the score, and just like that, Moose Jaw answers right back after Swift Kern had scored a touchdown of their own. And we do have kind of a shootout going here this afternoon with about uh, seven and a half to go in the fourth quarter. But yeah, the, uh, the weapons they have you got Bell, you got Douglas, you got Montgomery, uh, Bowman. I mean, these guys can, uh, can all carry the ball and can all make plays. Well, and Will Ansel's done a good job of mm -hmm. distributing the ball. He hasn't thrown it a lot, but he definitely has. Uh, you know, he's been able to distribute it. He hasn't made any mistakes. And so he's, he's, he's done a good job. Actually, they, 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 called, they him the called him down yeah. at the one. So It's going to be first and goal now for uh, Moose Jaw right at the one-yard line. Ansel back in at quarterback. So that is actually about a 15-yard run by Drake Douglas down to the one-yard line. Ansel will work out of the shotgun. First and goal at the one for the Razorbacks. He's going to give off to Bell off the left side. Fumbles the football. Gets it back. And he'll still score an opportunity there for the Swiftcurrent defense to create a turnover. But some alert running by Bryden Bell fumbles the football and he got the, we'll call it the Razorback bounce because he, it came right back to him. He picked it up and took it in for the score. And then it's not often you see that. Fumbles and it bounced right back up to him. And he was alert and right on it and took it in and still manages to score. That's a... That's a deflating play if you're a, a Swift Current defensive player. Well, and disappointing for them. They did a good job on that, actually. I thought they had him stopped uh, at that stage because they were right there. And, and whether he, he fumbled it himself kind of on, on transfer or whether they punched it out, mm. but they did create the turnover, but a uh, very favorable bounce. Johnson with a point after. He is good. And that'll make the score 48 to 28. The 20 point spread again with seven and a half to go in the fourth quarter. And you know, Eldon, that's another thing about this Moose Jaw team. Their possession, their ball possession, their ball security is very good. They do not turn the ball over. All these guys very sure handed. I believe that was their, their first fumble this afternoon. Yeah, first time they put it on the ground and, and uh, they were fortunate enough to get it back. And, you know, you got to give uh, Bell a lot of credit. He was, you know, he. He was alert enough and you know, he got a good bounce and he was able to keep stay on his feet. I mean, obviously in minor football, if you go down to a knee, the play's dead. So he didn't, he was able to stay upright and you know, was able to walk into the end zone after the initial touch, untouched. And that's a sign of a good football team with Moose Jaw too. I mean, every time Swift Kern has answered, they march it right back down and say, okay, well, you punched us in the mouth. We'll come back down and punch you with a score. And they've had an answer for every time Swift Kern's come back. And, I mean, a credit to the Swift Kern Steelers, too, for the way they've hung in this game and not rolled over and, and uh, made a game of it. Vavra with a kickoff return now at his own 30-yard line. Looks to get outside. Breaks one tackle, spins away, cuts it back inside now. Red Vavra breaks another tackle. Now he's gang swarmed up and uh, finally brought down around the 
35-yard line. It's a return of about six, but he ran about 40 yards to get that six-yard return, Eldon. And it'll be at the 37, actually. First and 10, Swift Current at the 37 with about uh, just under seven to go now here in the fourth quarter. 48-28, Moose Jaw leading it in this Bantam football game on Shaw TV. Moose Jaw defenders did a good job of stringing it out, but, uh, you know, even at that, if you're the Moose Jaw coaching staff, you're going, okay, we've got him, we've got him, we've got him. No, we don't have him. Okay, now we've got him. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of funny watching that, but but they did a good job to hold him to six yards. I think probably Brian Cloutier and his Swift Current staff have said that many times with Douglas this afternoon as well. Is that Kurtz, the ball carrier for Swift Current? And he's going to have a short gain as he busts it off the left side. A gain of about one or two, but uh, not much more for Garrett Kurtz, who's had a pretty solid afternoon this afternoon for the Swift Current Steelers. He's a first-year guy, so he's a great aider. Um, you know, when you think to next year, he'll be, you know, the feature back, mm -hmm. I would think, on this team. So, uh, you know, he's a he's quick. He's got nice feet. Um, he's able to make some things happen on that one. They, they, again, strung it out, but decent blocking up front on that play. Moberg out of the shotgun. He's got Vavra out in the flat, and he's got room to go. He turns on the Jets down the sidelines. Vavra. And guess who finally runs him out of bounds down there? Right there with him is Smith Schofer. Those two continue their battle this afternoon, but another huge pass and run play. Moberg to Vavra, and I would hate to see what the receiving yards are for Rhett Vavra this afternoon. He's got to be north of 200 now, Eldon. Well, he, he's had a ton. Um, you know, and he, Douglas. I mean, Douglas. Between okay. the two. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's good to see. I mean, you're down by 20 points. You're in the fourth quarter, but you just have to keep you just have to keep going. And and uh, you know, both offenses have just been very, very good today. I mean, I, I don't think in bantam football you really see execution like this very often. It's been unreal. It really has. I'm totally impressed. Late hit, I think, at the end of the play too, into the bench. I kind of wondered if there might be, but I didn't see a flag, so might must have come out a little bit late. But I thought uh, kind of a you know, a late hit kind of along the sideline. One of those tough plays for the defenders to hold up. So it will be a first and 10 situation for Swift Current. Deep in Moose Jaw territory, out of the shotgun. Moberg connects with Friesen, and Friesen's gonna score just like that. It's a 20 yard touchdown strike from Carter Moberg to Shane Friesen. And this Swift Current Steelers team is not going away. Every time Moose Jaw scores, they come right back down and put up points on the board themselves. It's 48-34, and they're keeping it close here, Eldon, and just that, that those uh, deep passes outside into that flat area have worked to almost perfection this afternoon at times for this Swift Current offense. No, they've done a great job, and, and they're going to go for two again, see if they can't bring it a little bit closer again. Moberg, end zone. I don't think he got in, though. He had Vavra there right at the one-yard line, but they can get in. He was close, but good coverage. Right on top of him by Moose Jaw. Keeps it out of the end zone, and it'll remain 48-34. It's a two-score lead for Moose Jaw with 5-17 to go fourth quarter, but this has been a very entertaining football game, and the fans here, and there's a great crowd out, too, of fans for this game on this Saturday afternoon. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast on Shaw TV. Certainly enjoyed bringing it to you, and um, both teams have uh, been full marks for uh, putting on an entertaining uh, display of football this afternoon. Yeah, and again, I mean, five minutes left. The way that the offenses have been able to move it the up and down the field, again, you're, you're looking for that two and out if you can get it. And, you know, for Moose Jaw, every time, and you mentioned it not long ago, every time Swift Kern has scored, they've been able to come back and, and answer. And, uh, you know, at some point in time, you kind of say, okay, is something going to give? Uh, you know, who blinks first? You know, it, it, it bodes well for high school football programs here in Swift Current and in Moose Jaw. These kids are all grade 8, grade 9, and some grade 10. I mean, they're getting that development and that coaching and that. And now when they come into high school and they're playing in grade 10 or grade 11 or grade 12, a lot of times you get guys that have never played organized football before and they've got three or four years experience. It's a great almost farm system for the high school programs. It definitely is. I, I think that's it's excellent. It's what you're looking for, and I guess why you get involved uh, to try and help help out programs on both sides. Absolutely. Bryden Bell on the kickoff return for Moose Jaw. There, he's up over his own 40-yard line. Good special league teams coverage by Swift Current on Bell, who's a dangerous runner in the open field. It's up to about his own 41-42-yard uh, line with five minutes to go in this football game. 
We've got an injured player down there. It looks like a swift current player is down. Let's hope that's not serious, Eldon. Well, I didn't see it, but it's right in the middle where you'd have your, you know, your bigger body guys Maybe took um, a hit on, your, on yeah. your kickoff returns. So, um, yeah, haven't, uh, not exactly certain what happened or... Hunter Benjamin, it sounds like, is, is who is down right now, one of the, the first-year Gull Lake linemen. Or from Gull Lake. From Gull Lake. From uh, a Swift There's current, a several Swift players player. from Gull, they come over from Gull Lake to play for the Steelers. Eh? Uh, I noticed uh, former Lion Nazar Zanadine here, and uh, he's got a son playing, uh, as is uh, Carter Jurdot's a Gull Lake kid. Of course, you're a good Gull Lake boy too, Eldon, and... We've always had some good by Shonovan guys, so the Shadows and Lions, our, our rivalry certainly goes back a ways, doesn't it? Some, some good battles between the, the Highway 37 battles when it comes to sports between Shonovan and Gull Lake. Real good uh, 2004 born group out of Gull Lake, um, where, and a lot of those kids have continued to come down. I think there's seven or eight that are playing on the team this year in Swift Current. Um, you know, for those in Moose Jaw who, who may not know, Gull Lake's about 30 minutes um, west of Swift Current. So, um, they've had uh, minor football out in Gull Lake. Uh, there's a, a team in teams in Shonovan as well um, that play within the Swift Current minor football umbrella. So, you know, real good to see these guys continuing to, to make the journey. Um, you know, you think of practicing three to four days a week mm -hmm. and, and playing the games. It's a big commitment from the parents out that, that way. So, you know, re real nice to see that and, and uh, good to see these kids having success within our program. And that Swift Current minor football program, like you were saying, it's great for not only Swift Current, but those outlying communities. It's really exploded in popularity over the last few years too, hasn't it, Eldon? It has, yeah. Uh, we've got about 160 kids playing and, you know, good to see. And similar with this Moose Jaw program, mm -hmm. they've got kids coming in from all over the place as well. Here's Drake Douglas on the end around the right side, the give again. And once again, he's got a good gain. It's going to be about 16 yards into Swift Current territory at the 53-yard line. And Drake Douglas is, uh, I think we look at his stats at the end of the game there, <laughs> going to be pretty eye-popping the numbers that he's put up. I believe he has four touchdowns. Uh, four touchdowns so far this afternoon? He would have had the fourth, but it got three. called back because yeah. uh, he got. they said he was down at the one, but he's he's got three officially, so... It is a big gain for Douglas, and it'll be first and 10, a moose jaw at the Swift Current 52-yard line. Just over four to go in the football game. It's a 48-34 lead, moose jaw over the Swift Current Steelers. Ansel out of the shotgun. Gives to the big man, Montgomery. Montgomery with a good gain. He's going to have about eight or nine. Inside the Swift Current 45-yard line, and you know when you're when you're continuously banging off seven or eight yards on first down, you're instantly putting yourself in second and in, in short right away, and your offense in good position. Yeah, and I mean they've they've actually been creative offensively, but in some say, situations you'd say they wouldn't have had to be because they've pounded the ball up the mm. middle so well. Um, but because of some of the things that they've done, I mean, obviously the flea flicker earlier on, which was very successful, but even just uh, the misdirection in their backfield, they, they've made it very difficult. Once again, it's to give to Montgomery right up the middle. He's got room to go, and the big man is going to score. Xander Montgomery. Just like that with back-to-back -back carries. This time, 44 yards. On the ramble, and he's got good speed for a big guy, Xander Montgomery for Moose Jaw. With the 44-yard uh, touchdown run, impressive. And uh, Moose Jaw, once again, full marks. They've uh, Every time Swift Current scored, they, they've answered. They've had an answer. And this offense of theirs uh, executes uh, very well. Well, and on that play, I, I would say that the Swift Current defense is getting tired. Yeah. I mean, you could just tell that they, you know, the... He got to the open field, and, and it's arm tackles, and you're getting fatigued, and it's it's real difficult to be able to uh, you know make those plays, and then that's what happens. And they've been they're getting worn down. They've been pounded on all day up front. Yep. Lane Johnson with the point after it's good, makes it a 55 to 34 lead in favor of Moose Jaw, and we have had an offensive shootout. These teams now combining for almost 90 points, Elder. You know earlier in the second half when you said 50 to 40 in the Rams-Huskies game, <laughs> and I said, I don't, I don't think we'll have enough time? We are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, we're getting a lot closer to that than I thought we were going to. I think uh, this is about 
three or four series in a row, like basically since the middle of the third quarter, every time both teams have scored, every time they've got, it's like who gets the ball last, who's going to score last? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, the Steelers came into the second half down by a pair of yeah. touchdowns, right? And that and basically that lead has, has been maintained. And then, of course, you take a few turnovers uh, have made the difference as well. Moose Jaws capitalized on uh, Swift Current Estates' full marks for their 21-point lead. The kickoff, is it Kurtz? Garrett Kurtz with the kickoff return. Nice run there. Breaks away, actually, and... Gets a few more yards up near the 50-yard uh, line at about the 49. And when it looked like he was wrapped up, he broke through and picked up another five or six yards on that return. Uh, Garrett Kurtz, he's had a, a pretty good afternoon here. And you said he's only a grade eight player, eh, Eldon? He's looked good for a 13-year-old. Yeah, no, he's he's got a good future. He just came back. He played as a younger guy, kind of didn't play last year, but came back to play this year. And... Um, he, he's a good player for them. I see Red Vavra wasn't out there to return the kicks, and he's on the sidelines here on this offensive series, so hopefully nothing serious. Nice coverage there as Moberg was looking for number 32 on that play for uh, Swift Current. Uh, that was Shane Friesen, and uh, broke up nicely by Moose Jaw, number 13, Samuel Kaplan. Great play by Kaplan there to break up that second and 10 now from the 49-yard line for the Steelers. Did a great job of kind of jamming him a little bit, forcing him to the outside, stayed right with him, and, um, you know, real close where if he could have got a second hand on that, he might have been able to take it back. Second and 10, Moberg out of the shotgun. Going to put it in the air. Looks up top, over the middle. Overthrows his man out there, and it falls uh, incomplete, so it'll be third and 10, and it'll be a, a punting situation there. Looks like maybe, uh, did you get a number on there who that was out there that he was looking for, Eldon? It was Kurtz, I think, again, yeah. Again? And, and uh, you know, I'm not sure if he broke off the pattern, but it looked like, um, you know, over either that or overthrown, one or the other, but uh, either way didn't connect, and it looks like they're going to punt. Punt away, uh, punting uh, situation here for Swift Kurtz. 2.29 to go, fourth quarter, 55-34. Moose Jaw leading in. This is at a stage in the game where maybe, uh, you know, both teams possibly start putting in some of the, the, the second stringers and guys that don't play as much. Douglas on the return. Shifts field and he's got room down the sidelines. Penalty flag flies. Douglas gets to the outside before he's wrapped up by Friesen. And we'll have another penalty there. Penalty flags all over the place. So there's going to be, we'll get these calls sorted out. Look like freezing maybe with a horse collar or a face mask. But there was flags flew back here as Douglas was breaking it down the right side. Good job by freezing to get out there and track him down. But it looked like maybe a, an illegal tackle. But there were some other flags before that as well. Maybe an illegal block. So we'll see how these penalties sort themselves out. I'm sure it's an illegal block or a holding and, and uh, the official on the near side here, he had to throw down the flag and then his hat because he he'd basically <laughs> called both of them. So the first one was was going to be on Moose Jaw. The second one uh, was definitely on the tackle on Friesen and he, he did get his hand up in the collar and uh, you know, good call I think in both situations for the officials. And it's good to see the officials, you know, calling those calls because at the end of the day these are 13, 14, 15 year old kids and you want to make sure, sure your number one priority is that they all go home, you know, safe and not injured at the end of the day too. So it's, it's good to see the officials making those calls and letting them know what what's legal and what isn't. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, they're there for the safety and I mean, these guys uh, are an important part of the game when you get a chance to, uh, you know, get them out here. You need you need the officials to, to help out. And, you know, I think uh, when you're involved in, in minor yeah, football programs, you're very thankful the of the Steelers. time and dedication that these guys put in to come out and help. And, you know, they don't get the gratification of maybe coaching or, you know, for the players playing. Um, but in talking to them, I think every one of them does it because they enjoy it. So it's nice to see them out and, and, and helping out uh, the, the respective programs, no matter where, where that is. The ref uh, crew this afternoon has done a great job. Called it fair for both teams. So Moose Jaw's first, after all that, Moose Jaw first and 10 at the Swicker 40 yard line. They go back to Montgomery, and once again, the big man with a solid gainer on first down. It'll be close to first down territory from their own 40 down near the Swift Current 30 and looks like about nine and a half and it'll be second and short and they have uh, used uh, Xander Montgomery effectively right up the middle this afternoon Eldon. Yeah he's he's pounded up the middle and and I mean they've basically 
from a rushing perspective, they've, I don't know what their rushing yardage would be on the day. Um, you know, we're not keeping stats of everything that way, but uh, it would be big yardage that they've been able to put out along the ground today. They have really pounded the ball well using all three guys, Bell, Douglas, and Montgomery. Ansel out of the shotgun. This time it's Bell on the left side. Cuts to the outside. Better coverage there, better tackling and clogging it up better. There was the Swicker defense, but he will have enough for a first down as it was second and short. That'll move the sticks. You give him a gain of about two and a half down to the Swift Current 28 yard line. It'll be first and 10, Moose Jaw at the Swift Current 28. Bell there, just very simply uh, off left tackle. Three yards, get the first down, move the sticks. Good job from Aiden Gatsky on, on the mm -hmm. coming in. He actually had to work off a block and was able to fight off the block and make the tackle. And, um, you know, good to see the Steelers defenders. You have to keep battling, you have to keep fighting at, at this stage of the game. First and 10 at the Swift Current 28. Ansel, high snap, gives to Montgomery again. He's going to have a nice gainer again. He'll have about uh, seven. He'll be second in about three. He's down around the Swift Current 20 yard line. And looks like they're just content to pound the ball and grind it away with only a minute to go now in the football game. And a 21 point lead. Moose Jaw quite content to just pound it away and pound it up the middle. And the Swift Current player, that is uh, number 30, Aiden Lamar, takes a, takes a knee and maybe just uh, trying to get his D a bit of a breather and a bit of a break here late in the game, Eldon. Well, he's one of the linebackers for the Steelers, and, I mean, they've, they've had a – it's been a battle for them all yeah. day to try and get to the ball carry. Or, he's a good-looking young player, though, um, first-year guy, another grade eight um, out of Gull Lake, and he's – He's, uh, he'll be a very good player down the road. Another of the kids that actually plays in the South Selects program uh, out of Moose Jaw, so in the, in the winter. So real good player, and he, he's uh, one of the key guys on the Steelers' defense. So it'll be second and about three. Ball at the 22-yard line of Swift Current. Second and three, Moose Jaw. They lead it 55-34. Less than a minute to go now in the football game. Ansel, out of the shotgun, gives to Bowman around the left side. This time it's defended well by the Swift Current defense as they uh, got out there to shut it down. But he's going to be close to a first down and may have it. And uh, it probably will be a first down. The end around to Bowman there. And it looks like it's going to be enough uh, for a first down. And they'll move the sticks. But it really looks like right now, I think... Uh, Moose Jaw is just going to eat it up, and they all get the first down. I wouldn't be surprised now to see them really just uh, take some knees and maybe kill the clock. Yeah, I'm not sure what package they're throwing in here right now, but they've uh, brought some different guys out. This is a little bit more of their Wildcat package, it looks like, as Ansel goes to the sideline, and Douglas will step in at quarterback. So not sure what they have up there. Oh, they're actually going to try a long try field, a field goal. goal. It is okay. third and one, so they're going to so try So this is actually probably going to be the last play of the game. Yeah. yeah. They're going to try a, a long field goal here. And he's got it. Nice play there. The gap off the scoring, the last play of the football game. I believe it's Lane Johnson. And that will go down as about a 25-yard field goal. Very good. A, a Phantom football, a 25-yard field goal. You don't see 25-yard field goals in high school football very often, Eldon. And Lane Johnson has had a very solid afternoon. Uh, he had the opening kickoff return for a touchdown. He's kicked several converts and now about a 25-yard field goal. Special teams player of the game, I'd say, Alvin. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely would get the award. That was, no, he did a great job on that. And I, I think, you know, it's good to see them test that. You know, I think you get into a game like this where you're late and, and you know, let's see if you can kick that 25-yard field goal. You never know where it might come into play later on in the year to, to give it a try. And third and one, they probably could have pounded the ball, but you know, it's not going to change the outcome of the game, so let's try something different. So, good for them. Looks like they are going to uh, play, run one more play, and it'll be a... Uh, no, they're going to call the game there. It looks like they were going to run a kickoff, but it looks like the officials are going to call the game there, so... Look like they were going to run... I think they are. I think they... Oh, no, they are going to call it. They're going to call They're going to call it there. Look like they were going to run one more play, but they are going to run one more play. Swift Current's going to take it. Nope. That's the end of the game. I think Swift Current wants to run Swift the play. They want to go, play, but it's it's all over. They're going to so. call it. They were going to look like they were going to run one more play there from the 35-yard line, but 
That field goal, that 25-yarder by Johnson, is the final play of the game. So the final score in this Bantam football game this afternoon, it's the Moose Jaw Razorbacks moving to 4-0 with a 55-34 win, oh, win over the uh, Swift Current, Lens Plumbing and Heating, Smitty Steelers on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Swift Current. Swift Current falls to 2-0. and oh. Eldon had a blast. Uh, it was great uh, to bring you this game, to bring everybody this game. And a big shout out to Shaw TV for doing it as well. And it was a ton of fun and good football game. It was lots of offense. And I think when you're looking at execution at an early ages, we talked about it through the broadcast. You're you're looking at how do the offenses, how can they execute, how do they handle things, and. Um, you know, both teams on offense, I thought, executed very well today. Obviously, Swift Current made a f uh, more mistakes, a couple turn, few turnovers, and Mooshjaw capitalized. Mooshjaw was pretty much flawless on offense. But overall, um, you know, great offensive performances uh, across the board. When you can combine at this, and actually, I think it's 58-34. They didn't put the extra three points. Uh, me, they didn't put the extra three yes. points up at the end when he kicked the field goal. But, uh, you know, when you can combine for 92 points, uh, at this level of football, I think that's that's pretty well done. 58-34, Moose Jaw wins it over Swift Current this afternoon, and we'll wrap things up there. Eldon, it was a ton of fun. Enjoyed it. Hopefully we can do it again soon sometime. You've been watching Bantam Football on Shaw TV.